from Pacific Belt Park. It's already 7-0 Air Force, and they're driving again. A couple of flags down as Leotis Palmer is tackled after about a one-yard gain. Air Force scored on its very first possession. Bob Stone joining us on the sidelines as Matt Ward scored on a 15-yard touchdown run after well, that was set up by a 47-yard pass on the second play of the game. We like the timing of the pass call because they want to be somewhat balanced tonight against this Virginia Tech Holding defense. Offense, 10 yards to the previous spot. Still second down. And since you're just joining us, let's take a look at that very first Air Force drive. First time they got the ball, Chance Harridge on top to Anthony Park, 47 yards, and then a little trickery, that's Leotis Palmer to Matt Ward, and the freshman takes it 15 yards, and then a controversial fumble by Lee Suggs gave Air Force the ball back, and now second and 16 after that holding call. Harridge, plenty of time looking for Palmer, and it is incomplete. Ronya Whitaker got his hands on it, but it falls down harmlessly. And there's that 15-yard touchdown run by Matt Ward, his second TD of the season. A fumble recovery on uh, Lee Suggs, who was obviously down, was uh, called for the fumble. And then Chance Harridge, with that 47-yard pass play to Park, has become the fifth player in Air Force history to have a 1,000-yard passing season and 1,000-yard rushing season. Obviously, this is when you're a triple option team. This is not the position you want to be in third and 16. They probably want to get in position to get some type of field goal. Harridge, good job to get away from pressure. He's throwing across the grain, looking for Darnell Stevens. I'll tell you, if Chance would have delivered the football, Darnell had some running room and blockers in front of him. Chance hurried to throw a little bit, which often happens on the screen. You got to let it set up and develop. And it was developed. He just got to deliver the ball. Darnell slipped a little bit. Fisher DeBerry giving encouragement to Chance Harridge. We get our first look at Joey Ashcroft as a field goal kicker. He is 14 of 16 on the season. This is a 46 yarder. He is 2 of 3 from 40 to 49 this season. Ashcroft's kick goes right into the. It is good from 45 officially. So Air Force gets the ball twice, and they score twice. The Falcons up 10-0 early in San Francisco. Still doing those bills, hon? <laughs> Just resting with a credit card balance. You've been feeding on those high interest rates. <laughs> I just switched our balance over to a Capital One No Hassle card. Oh. You're gonna save 500 bucks a year. 500 bucks? Switch your high interest balance to the Capital One No Hassle card for the nation's lowest long-term fixed rates. You could save up to $500 a year. What's in your wallet? <laughs> Introducing the all-new 240 horsepower Accord from Honda. Wie haben sie das geschafft? How did they do it? One of the best bowl matchups of the season. Rex Grossman and the Gators collide with John Navarre and the Wolverines. Touchdown! Capital One Bowl Week continues with the Outback Bowl at 11 a.m. It all starts with College Game Day at 9.30, New Year's Day on ESPN. Rip it and rip it? Heck yeah. I think it's a great way to start a haul. But the bank, I don't think it'd be nearly as much fun if you put it first. Charles Howe III joins golf's best at the Mercedes Championships on ESPN. 
welcome to the inaugural Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bulls Air Force. Boy, this is about as good as they could ever have imagined as they lead Virginia Tech 10 to nothing here in the first quarter. And uh, Chris Spielman, this is uh, obviously a dream come true for Air Force, but Virginia Tech certainly has the, the guns to get back into it. Well, they do, and the thing Virginia Tech needs to do is stay patient, stay with their offense, and not panic. And there was a bad call against Virginia Tech, but the thing that made it good was Air Force, if you're an Air Force fan, took advantage of the bad call, made up for it, and got points off the turnover. Chance Herridge on the phone there. Joey Ashcroft kicking a 45-yard field goal after a fumble recovery and return by Larry Duncan. A, uh, only had to go seven yards after the fumble to set up Ashcroft for his field goal. So now Virginia Tech in a 10-zip hole gets the football for the second time tonight. Hokies representing the Big East. Air Force from the Mountain West. Suggs says leave it alone. And that's a good call because with the penalty, Tech will get it at the 35-yard line. Michael Greenaway kicking it out of bounds. Brian Randall has been the starter of quarterback since game three for the Hokies. He is 11th in the country in passing efficiency, taking over for Grant Dole, who now backs him up. Two-headed monster at running back, Lee Suggs and Kevin Jones combining for over 2,000 yards, and their fullback is one reason why. Yeah, Doug Eastlick is a guy that's kind of the unsung hero of this offense. He's a great blocker and has the chance to catch the ball out of the backfield. And Lee Suggs, the senior, coming back from that devastating ACL tear that happened in the season opener last year. He's run for over 1,200 yards. Randall looking. Great coverage downfield and breaking away momentarily was the tight end Keith Willis. And this Pac-10 crew calls it a catch. This is where Randall can hurt you now. He buys time with his feet. He's able to... Look for an open receiver downfield and deliver the football on the run. This is the offensive line. Jake Grove leading them. He made some All-American teams known for his nastiness on the field. Grove the center. And Air Force with a new 3-3-5 defense. It worked well as they're giving up about 100 yards a game less on average than they did last season. It was a 20-yard game, so now on second down, Randall running a little bit of option, pitches it forward to Suggs, and he is buried by Joel Velo, loses a couple. Yeah, I don't know if option's a thing you want to run against Air Force. They see it all the time, they know how to defend it. Linebackers now for the Air Force Academy, Anthony Schlegel, just a sophomore in the middle, Chris. Yeah, the one of the great thing about Anthony Schlegel is elected captain as a sophomore in this Air Force team. And 3-3-5 three, three, means you have five guys in the back. Paul Mayo from Texas, one of those corners, has to keep an eye on Ernest Wilford, the leading receiver, number 19, for Virginia Tech. And below and Marshall like hybrids are the part DB, part linebacker. They get up there and play on a lot of scrimmage a lot. Second and 11 after that last play. Play action dropped in perfectly for the first down, completed to Club Harm, a 16 yard gain. So Brian Randall sitting in the pocket, not only showing that he can throw on a run, but he has the patience to deliver a strike on a crossing route. Nice job by Virginia Tech picking up the blitz off the back side. They came with a corner blitz. Tight end stayed in and block picked up the corner. Brian Randall read the blitz, read the coverage, delivered a strike. Randall perfect so far, Chris. Three, three for three for 52 yards through the air. A couple of tight ends in now to block. Thomas Jones, his first carry. Anthony Schlegel strings him out. And finally, he is pushed out at the 25-yard line. Let's join the third member of our team, Rob Stone. Guys, kind of a, a layout quirk here at Pac Bell Stadium. Both teams on the same sideline. How close are they? This close. Ten yards. That's it. I'm now on the Air Force side. It's catching both coaches off guard. Coaches are yelling over here. The other coaches are whipping their head around, so it's kind of hard, you know, to, to keep things to yourself. And then Fisher DeBerry told me, hey, we got a big offensive lineman hanging out here. He's got to run 50, 60 yards down there to get in the play. Man, it ain't easy. 
easy for those big old horses, is it? Well, they're gonna have to get an IV at halftime just to get on and off the field. Maybe some oxygen too for, for Rob down there. So Kevin Jones continuing in the backfield, and he has stopped their Schlegel, the sophomore in the middle, leading this team with over 100 tackles, 106 coming in to this football game. You know, even though it's a 3-3-5, what they do is they'll bring a lot of pressure and blitz almost every down. That time they'll take care of all gaps, leaving Anthony Schlegel to read the running back and read the cutback and come up and make a nice tackle. Solid, solid player for a sophomore. Third and three as Jones continues in the backfield. They'd like to get him in relatively early. Get him a nice feel for the game. And on third and three, Randall goes on top all day to throw. He goes towards the end zone, and it is dropped. Well, Parham had it momentarily, but was unable to bring it in. Well, he's got to make that catch. Again, Randall buying time with his feet. Creating an opportunity to have him an option of run or pass delivers a strike and that was a nice job by Kevin Jones picking up Trevor Hightower on the blitz. But I'm, I'm impressed with Randall's composure. He's not looking to run all the time. If you're a pure running quarterback, you take that and run. He looked for the open receiver, had a chance for a big play. Guy dropped the football. Carter Worley now in to attempt a 41-yard field goal. Three for five from 40 to 49 this year. Worley, who has battled back problems, knocks it right into the upright. No good. So Frank Beamer's team continues to trail Air Force 10-0 after Worley finds a goalpost. What to do with these? The answer? Try delicious diamond nuts on all your favorite foods, like walnuts and stuffing, or on oatmeal. It's a great way to add texture and taste to just about anything. Wholesome, delicious diamond nuts. They top everything. Try diamond glazed nuts, now available in snack sizes. Will it catch the competition by surprise? become the car by which all others are judged. Will lightning strike again? The all-new Accord from Honda. I was looking for a great deal, so I talked to a good friend of mine. Emmett was desperate. That's when Al told me about 1010-220. I told him all calls up to 20 minutes are 99 cents. I was reluctant to sign up for anything. I told him he didn't have to sign up. Just dial 1010-220. Push the buttons, man. Thanks to Al, I dialed 1010-220 right then and there. Who'd you call? That's really none of your business. Well, dial 1010-220, then one and the number. Anytime, Scott. See ya. ESPN2's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl. Brought to you by Diamond of California. Be sure to try Diamond's new line of kettle cooked glazed walnuts, the perfect game time snack. And by the all new Accord from Honda. It's more Accord than ever. San Francisco is certainly one of the best cities in the country if you want nice, fresh seafood down by Fisherman's Wharf. Some big old crab legs, huh, Chris? Yeah, I'd have about, I'd have about eight broken fingers by now. <laughs> Boy, Carter Worley hitting the upright. He missed four games because of a bad back. That was a 41-yard attempt that didn't quite get through. Steve Massey, the fullback, first time he has carried the ball this evening. Chance Herridge is the point man in the Falcons triple option offense. The NCAA 
quarterback record, 22 touchdowns on the ground. He set that coming into this game before this game even started. And Leonis Palmer, second Harridge in rushing for the Falcons. He's also thrown two touchdown passes. And he was the guy who got the ball and flipped it before the rushing touchdown by Matt Ward. Here's Harridge, holds on to it this time. And he is ankle tackled. No gain as Billy Hardy made the stop. Here's the offensive line that makes the country's number one rushing attack go. Scott Meyer is starting for Blaine Newfeld at strong tackle. Newfeld is out, broke his foot back on December 17th, stepping on a sprinkler in practice back in Colorado Springs. And the Hokies' defensive tackle spot has been thinned out by injury. And Nathaniel Adibi looking for him to get some action inside tonight, but he did start at a defensive end position. Third and seven now from the 27. DB lined up right in there inside the three technique. Harridge gives it up the middle to Anthony Butler and the speed back for the Falcons shows that burst as he travels all the way up to the 44-yard line, an 18-yard gain. Now, let me tell you where Virginia Tech went wrong right there. It's third and seven, and you guys are getting upfield on the pass rush. Defensive line, at least the two inside defensive tackles, have to hold the position or the point at the line of scrimmage because they're a running football team. They're not going to throw the ball downfield. You bring your pass rush from the outside, have your two inside DTs play run, they were stop the play. Butler finally back at full strength after missing four games with a variety of injuries this season. Up top and out of bounds as he was trying to find Don Clark who had four catches coming in to this game. Here are the linebackers now for Virginia Tech. Mikel McKee is their leading tackler, but Willie Pyle really the leader of this defense, Chris, and he is in their defensive backfield. Yeah, Willie Pyle's a guy that bit up early on the option that sucked up there. The guy went past him. You gotta be deep as a defense. If you're, if you're free safety, you play pass, first, run, second. Pyle known as the coach by his teammates because he knows everything. So they say, second and 10, Harridge, that is picked off to the arms of Vegas Robinson. And then it's pitched back to D'Angelo Hall. And a little scuffle on the sideline, some flags coming down. The first turnover by Air Force. And Chance Harris throws a pick, throws, throws a nutty on the sidelines, gets a 15-yard penalty. Unnecessary roughness, you'll see right there, Coach DeBerry saying, use your head. Chance Harris delivering a ball. Vegas with a pick. He's running the option himself. My name's Friday. I'm a cop. From the creator of Law and Order. There's a serial killer out there right now hunting down young women. Ed O'Neill. We gotta get this guy now. And Sweet Home Alabama's Ethan Embry. Talk or you'll never talk again. The badge is back. Dragnet coming in February to ABC. Honey, starting a family means getting a new car. VHicks.com is the easiest way to shop for cars. Compact? We're talking family. Right. With online comparisons, features, even safety mm, records. It's too small. It, it's a sedan. It's too small. Exactly how, uh, how big of a car we need. So you can find the one car for you and your family. <laughs> Minivan. VHicks.com. Roadmap to the automotive world. During Empire's half-off carpet sale, I'm cutting prices in half on all our best stain-resistant carpets. 50% off. That's a lot of cutting for a lot of savings. We'll bring samples to your home so you can choose your carpet where you use your carpet. And we'll install next day, complete with padding, with no payments till 2004. Empire's half-off sale. Big price cuts mean big savings. 800 m Welcome back to San Francisco. Lee Suggs just got the ball and no gain as John Radzinski tackled him in his tracks and actually lost three on the play. Chance Harridge called for that personal foul. And there's Suggs again. This time a whole lot of running room and he finds the end zone again. Lee Suggs 
scoring his 21st touchdown of the season on the ground. That's what you want to do anytime you get one a turnover. Vegas Robinson with the turnover. He sucks. Ended up in there on the power row. Led by Jacob Gibson. Throwing a great block. Lee Sucks knows how to get to the end zone when he smells it. Boy, and how, Chris. 27 straight games now. He has scored a touchdown, extending his NCAA record. Extra point by Warley. It is good. So the interception and then the personal foul as more flags come down, a little scrum after the extra point, and Virginia Tech right back in this game. That's what Virginia Tech needed to get back in this game. They needed a big turnover. They got it, then they capitalized. Points off turnovers are huge in any football game at any level. After the play is over, personal foul. Air Force, that 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. All right, let's go now to Reese Davis. Reese. All right, Pam, we've seen some chippiness in this game. Not much fight out of Tennessee against Maryland in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Scott McBrien going in for a second touchdown tonight. The Terps open up a can on the Vols. The Fritz celebrating 30-3 Maryland. By the way, it's 2003 in Newfoundland and Nova Scotia, so Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Reese. We knew you had to get one in at least. The Atlantic time zone is, uh, is celebrating. Newfoundland, actually, a weird time. They're like a half hour between the Atlantic and the Eastern, but more importantly, Lee Suggs here in the Pacific time zone is a player. 330 points now as he is inching up on Nate Trout, trying to get to second place for the Big East lead. And again, 27 straight games, Chris, in which he scored a touchdown. That's unbelievable. It, it is unbelievable, and that's what makes him a great back and a wanted back come draft time because he has the ability to get the ball into the end zone. He's a power runner. He has great speed and shows no ill effects of the knee injury he suffered against UConn last year in the open. Had lunch with him yesterday. He's excited about his opportunity to play tonight and to showcase his talent. Well, he's going to go home to Roanoke Oak and start thinking about playing on the next level as Worley pops it up. Short kickoff after the penalty. Alec Mezuall is corralled down. Air Force will take over at the 16. Jared Mazetta making the special teams tackle. He is a third string tight end. Let's see how Chance Herridge responds. Now, Frank Beamer there, you can show the importance of the places on special teams. A lot of times you would see teams at that type of field position kicking would kick into the end zone. He popped it up to get, create great field position for Virginia Tech's defense. Come on. Bobby, what am I supposed to do with these? The answer? Try delicious diamond nuts on all your favorite foods, like walnuts on pancakes or almonds and stir fry. It's a great way to add texture and taste to just about anything. Wholesome, delicious diamond nuts. They top everything. Try diamond glazed nuts, now available in snack sizes. AC on. CD play disc four. Find nearest Chinese restaurant. The voice activated navigation system responds to 180 commands. Order a uh, Mushu pork. That's not one of them. The all new 240 horsepower Accord from Honda. Rodney King should have got beat for driving drunk and being grown in a Honda. Oh. See what the buzz is all about. Your father wouldn't put up with this mess. Do I look like my father? Yeah. Yeah, you do, man. And the nose. Barbershop on a special edition DVD. Buy or rent it Wednesday. Be there for the three-pointers and the in-your-face dunks. ESPN Full Court is maximum college basketball with more than 450 games, including coverage of the NCAA Women's Tournament. Will you be there? To order, call your cable company, DirecTV, or Dish Network. It's fun to let the big dog eat. Heck yeah. Charles Howe III joins golf's best at the Mercedes Championships on ESPN. Beautiful shot overlooking Pacific Bell Park on China Basin here in San Francisco on New Year's Eve. So those of you on the East Coast, top of the hour, you'll be ringing in the new year. Lee Suggs is ringing out the old year by scoring a touchdown. Air Force needs to get back to running the football. Now. He just established that line of scrimmage. 
Look, you're on that offensive line. Watch him bear crawl. Harris. There's the handoff to Butler, and he is corralled in the backfield by Mattel McKee, losing three yards on that play. So after a slow start, this Tech defense is starting to rev it up a bit. Yeah, they're getting away from their triple option attack. They're going to a more conventional high formation right there. They're trying to run the old John Riggins, Washington Redskins, counter OT, but speed kill them. Cannot match up athletically, so what they have to do is out-scheme this speedy Virginia Tech defense. So difficult defensively to prepare for this triple option that Air Force runs to perfection. And the late pitch to Leonis Palmer. He is shoved out of bounds by Willie Pyle. His second tackle gives four to Palmer, but a third and long coming up. And Air Force's offense not designed for third and longs. Frank Beamer, the winningest coach in Virginia Tech history, has taken his team to 10 straight bowl games. He's done wonderful things at his alma mater. Ian Fisher to Barry, the head coach at Air Force, good friends. And they go back about 30 years to when they were both assistants way back when. There's Fisher, 19th season at Air Force. He's Falcons two for three on third down so far tonight. Make it two for four. Steve Massey, the big fullback, is stopped well short of the first down. Again, right now, Virginia Tech's kind of settled down. Their defense made necessary adjustments under coordinator Bud Foster. They're playing assignment football to stop the option. Got a hurry up punt situation. With no opportunity. It's for the hurry up punt as Virginia Tech instead takes its first time out. You know, right down there, you see right there, Frank Beamer saying, look, you got to give us time to get off the field because of the sidelines, both teams on the same sideline, reminiscent of Milwaukee County Stadium where the Green Bay Packers used to play. Well, to take this time now to say Happy New Year to the airmen assigned to the Pacific Air Forces watching today on AFN, the American Forces Network, including the Eagle Airlifters of the 36th Airlift Squadron at Yokota Air Base in Japan. They fly C-130 missions throughout the Pacific region. America thanks you for all you do. And of course, the folks in Japan already into 2003. Air Force 8-4 and four and finished third in the Mountain West at 4-3. and three. Lost four of six games of its last six after getting out to that 6-0 and oh start. And then they played Notre Dame, and things kind of changed for them. Yeah, and the Notre Dame game was almost excusable. But when you lose to Wyoming and San Diego, San Diego State, taking nothing away from those programs, those are games they felt they should have won. Wyoming had just been smashed in Mountain West games before they won in Laramie. Robert Barkers, this is his first punt attempt in six games. D'Angelo Hall waiting back as the punt bounces in front of him. Hall wants no part of it. And Virginia Tech will take over at its 34 after a 43-yard punt by Barkers. <laughs> These two teams have played only once before. It was the Independence Bowl in 1984. Tech got up early 7-3 when tailback Maurice Williams took it in from three yards out. But then things changed in the second on this fumble. Falcons picked it up at the three and eventually got a touchdown. Now Air Force caps it off. Quarterback Bart Weiss, a 13-yard touchdown run. Air Force wins the Independence Bowl 23-7. to Tonight, only their second meeting ever, and again in postseason. Randall, nice rollout and a good catch at midfield, collected by Sean Witten, the senior from Tennessee, picks up 17 yards. See Randall gonna get him out on the perimeter. That gives him the option to run past, but he's looking to throw the football. This is a good job by Sean Witten getting his body in position to help him make the catch. It's a well-thrown ball. You want to throw that one only where Sean can bring it in. That's where Randall delivered it. Witten is the second leading receiver for this team. Great hands. His brother Jason, the starting tight end at Tennessee, who lost to Maryland. Right? And there's Witten again. And he takes it up, picks up about nine yards or so. Marcello Grady coming up to make the stop for Air Force. And that's a good job by Anthony Davis at 322 pounds, getting out there and getting a block on the DB. That shows that guy can run right here. We'll see if this is, did he one hop this? Randall makes a nice throw. Little, gotta get it up. That's a drop. 
That's a makeup. That's a makeup call. When you see when you see everybody stop and stand around, they know that's a makeup call. Now it's all even. And if you're just joining us, there was a a fumble that Lee Suggs was called for. He was obviously down. It was it was a bad call. And it led to Air Force's field goal that made it 10 to nothing. And Virginia Tech, as the first quarter comes to an end, holding on to the football. Lee Suggs and company back in this game. It's 10-7. The 2003 NCAA Women's Basketball Championship on ESPN and ESPN2. All around the world, Siemens is energizing the cities and towns we live in. We engineer new ways to efficiently generate, distribute, and use power. And by providing energy to people everywhere, we're giving them the power to live better. You have the ultimate power to look better, to be stronger, to redefine your body and yourself. This is the Bowflex Power Pro. Quite possibly the most effective home fitness machine ever made. In as little as 20 minutes a day, three times a week, you can get real results that can change your entire body. With over 60 health club quality exercises and up to 410 pounds of resistance, it's like having an entire gym in your home. Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. You can own a Bowflex with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Call and ask for a free video and brochure and check out the entire Bowflex lineup or visit us on the web today. Redefine your body with Bowflex. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, come on. Catch the ball before you run with it. Let's Basketball go. 101. Basketball 101. Tell somebody. Tell somebody now. Oh, what are you there doing? There you go. Just like we drew it up. Come on. Tangle up with the ball. San Francisco, Virginia Tech with the football as we start the second quarter as they trail the Air Force Academy 10 to 7. Brian Randall off to a great start, 5 for 6, 78 yards for the quarterback from Tech. Starting off second and one from the Air Force 40. Jones slips a tackle and then slips down on the grass field here at Pac Bell and he's going to be about a half yard short of the first down. That's some nifty footwork by Kevin Jones avoiding Adrian Wright again on, on the blitz. Kevin gave him a leg took it away then he tried to make a cut cut off that inside foot. It's a wet field. I was down there before the game soft field. Quite a bit of rain here in the Bay Area really over the last several weeks. It rained earlier today but is cleared up nicely for this game but as Chris said it's very damp down there we saw them squeegeeing the field third and two and that's a first down with interest from Jones he takes it down inside the 34 yard line Grady making his second tackle if you come in on a blitz you better be gap sound because on the blitz it's, you're vulnerable to getting one popped on you that time Kevin Jones certainly has the ability to go the distance snuck through an opening gained positive yards jones just a sophomore from chester pennsylvania and perhaps the most heralded recruit ever to come to tech under frank beamer he picks up that first down puts the ball on the 34 yard line randall up top jones does a great job of picking up the blitz wilford in the end zone just off his fingertips well, Jeff Overstreet was there, but that's usually the kind of pass that Wolford will bring in. Well, it's 6'4". Look for them to come back to that because he certainly has a 5-inch height advantage over Overstreet, and it's a well-thrown ball. Throw it up for grabs. Throw the jump ball. Let your tall guy go over to short guy. Overstreet actually did a good job of positioning, and that's one. 
that Wilford should have brought in because it hit his hands. That's the Chris Bielman That's rule. That's the Chris Bielman rule. If your receiver <laughs> touches a fingernail, you got to bring her in. And you see the, the records, boy, a lot of school records for Wilford, who is putting that infamous two-point conversion drop against Miami last year behind him. Randall on the option, holds on and goes down. Schlegel right on top of him. Anthony Schlegel had the opportunity to sit with all the captains, and he was linebacker I sat with yesterday. You see right here, he shows good lateral movement, beats a guard underneath with a swim technique, is able to adjust off the move of Randall and make a tackle. Good play by a middle linebacker. Good instincts running to the football. Schlegel wearing number 51 for his idol. No, not Chris Spielman, but... Dick Buckus, you guys were sitting together at lunch yesterday. Yeah. It was kind of cute, the two linebackers. Yeah. Calling each other blockhead. We yeah. couldn't figure out which was a bigger blockhead. <laughs> I think I have an idea. Yeah. <laughs> Neither one of my blockheads, by the way, neither Schlegel nor Spielman, touched their dessert, by the way. They were more good guys. On third and long, Randall completes it. To Farham. And he is stopped well short of the first down, about five yards short. So a very short pass pattern when they needed 12 yards. They're, they're contemplating whether to go for it on fourth down here. Carter Worley missed a 41-yard field goal. He has been struggling with the bad back pretty much for the entire season for the Hokies. And they are going to go for it as Randall stays in. Fourth and six. This is an opportunity. I think you got the ball on the hash mark. You want to maybe work Randall to the wide side of the field. And let, have, let him have the option to run pass. Now officially fourth and five. Tech six for 13 during the regular season. As Schlegel shows blitz coming right up the middle to Randall, and he gets him. That's what they tried to do, but Schlegel on a blitz came through unblocked and was able to cut off the angle where Wilford, where Randall was running. Outstanding call. Here he comes. You got to be able to block him again. He throws the arm over. He comes in, cuts off the angle, knocks him down for the sack. Baby, baby, I've got the Choose the Pontiac High Performance Play of the Year. Vote online at ESPN.com, keyword Pontiac. The winning play will be announced live on the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Pontiac, fuel for the soul. So? Well... Technically, you have to stick the landing. Sorry, Mr. Hall, patent denied. Oh, man. Winter X Game 7 in Aspen, presented by Taco Bell, starts January 30th on ESPN2. The seven layer nachos from Taco Bell. So much flavor for so little price, you may perform the seven flavor tango. I don't think so. Get all the flavor of seven intense tastes stacked on golden chips. At just 99 cents, they're a value. Down to the very last bite. Look, there's two left. To get more flavor for 99 cents, think outside the bun. Discover the amazing training secrets of Baseball World's dynamic practice organization video featuring professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky and his famous step-by-step -step building block approach to athletic training. These are the same techniques that have produced Baseball World's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU national championship teams. Parents, players, and coaches are amazed at the rapid improvement of students using these principles, enhancing arm strength, running speed, quickness, and agility. Dynamic practice organization works for all ages and levels of ability and makes a great gift to order now. Anthony Schlegel's third sack of the season has given Air Force the football back. They lead by three here in the Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl. And these stunning views of the Bay Area and Pac Bell Park, courtesy of the Saturn Lightship. Saturn and its retailers hope you're enjoying ESPN2's coverage of the San Francisco Bowl. And that's our, it's my first blimp game. Yeah. We have a blimp. It's big time when you get a blimp. The Saturn Lightship along with us on a beautiful night for flying. There's a any win to speak of as Herridge takes over. Quarterback hanging on to it and picking up about five. 
And that's kind of like a old single wing play where the quarterback gets the ball. And it's just a quarterback sweep and you'll see guys throwing good blocks. Matt Thompson gets a good block. You see the fullback kick somebody out, tailback. But a DB showing speed, pursuing the ball down the field, catching Chance Harris from behind. But it's a productive first down play. And that's what Air Force needs to be in this ball game. They need to create and get themselves out of bad position for third downs. And they've now run the ball more than three times, more than they passed it, as Darnell Stevens gets the ball, and he gets a couple of yards. Let's go down to the field now, and Rob Stone. Well, Pam, Hokie Jr. safety Michael Crawford playing with big-time guts today. A November biopsy revealed tissue that appeared to be malignant, but he and his mother decided to push back a second, more probing test for lymphoma until Friday so he could play tonight. Doctors actually say playing is a psychological boost in the treatment process, so Crawford already a step ahead in his probable treatment process, and another bit of good news, lymphoma considered a very curable cancer. All right, right now on third and three. Crawford is out there. As Butler slips down, actually, excuse me, that's Stevens again on that slick field, and he is appears to be a little bit short of the first down. And just going back to Crawford, the young man, and talking to the Virginia Tech people, Chris, they say that he actually lifts their spirits, yeah. that he's just that kind of guy. Which is often the case with cancer patients, is that they always make everybody feel better around them. And uh, I certainly wish him the best. And you know, it's not for sure that it's cancer, but I uh, you know he has the support of a lot of people and prayers of his teammates, coaches, and a lot of fans around the country. And go back to his hometown of Baltimore to make sure, as Air Force is indeed just a couple of inches short of the first down, their fans yell, go. And Harridge stays out there on the football field. It's funny, when he slipped that time, he slipped and he almost went backwards. He slipped so hard. If he would have just put his head down, he tried to make a move. Willie Pyle coming up from his free safety position, who's often the defender responsible for the pitch and the triple option threat. The free safety is your guy that's got to come up and make open field tackles, and I can't think of a better one than Willie Pyle. So that's one of Pyle's responsibilities now. Unbelievable. Air Force has converted 73% of its fourth downs this year. 16 of 22. Here's a big fourth and in inches on their side of the field. And Tim Gershitz, the fullback, appears to have it. Gershitz did a good job of second effort getting there. That was good penetration by the Virginia Tech defensive line, but Gershitz showing fighting, knowing he only needs a couple inches. You see the guard pull around, lead up. Gershitz follows him. Legs keep driving. There you go. He's not down yet, and he gets that extra lunge at the end to get the first down. Gersitz, a fullback, coming in and getting just enough, and it keeps the clock rolling. First and 10 now, right at midfield. Air Force scoring the first 10 points of this game, but have been silent since. And Willie Pyle and company start to congratulate each other. And Jimmy Davis beat the block. Harris just knocked uh, backwards. Jimmy Davis beat Matt Thompson on a quick move. And again, you see the speed and athleticism of this Virginia Tech defense. When you can take care of the quarterback on your option responsibility from the backside, the option is not much of a threat. Matt Thompson has to get his block. Jimmy Davis beat him on a quick move inside. And that resulted in a three-yard loss for Harridge. This time he's going up top. He's only completed one pass tonight, and it's one interception. Does he have two? Yes. Garner Wilds coming up with his fifth pick of the season. So Harridge, after completing that 47-yarder early in this game, has struggled through the air. That's his second pick. And what you're going to see, you're going to see Parker right here coming in, trying to run an in route, and he slips right there. The ball's being thrown to him, but he can't get up and make the time. It's a great break on the football by Wilds. 
See, Park's got to keep his feet. When you're a receiver and you're playing on a wet field, you have to understand that you have to play with your feet underneath you. Wilds plays with his feet underneath and doesn't slip on the break and comes up, does a good job getting his hands underneath and making a catch. Harrich had only five picks all season. He has two tonight that he has thrown as Randall gets strung out nicely right along the line, picks up maybe a half yard. Eric Thompson, the senior from Woodland, Texas, in pursuit. John, John Rosinski also from his linebacker position, protecting his legs, jumping over blockers, making a nice play. Again, I don't know the wisdom in running the option against this Air Force team. They face it all spring. They're undersized guys, quick guys, and know how to get off blocks, and especially avoid chop blocks because that's all their offensive line does. So you would just take it right up the middle between the tackles? I would attack him right up the middle, and if I'd see him coming to blitz, I'd auto blize and throw deep to, to Wilford every time. He's got a five-inch height advantage right there. He's pointing him out. He's got nobody covering him down right now. That's right. we got four receivers in for Tech. Short will know to Whitten, and he runs for the first down. And gets it into Air Force territory. Radzinski makes a stop. That's the third catch for Whitten, that time for 13 yards. Yeah, no, pay attention. I want to tell you what happened. Randall right there saw Wilford was on cover. Zinski came out and covered him on the snap. The corner backed off. So right away, Randall knows when the corner backs off, he's going to have the hitch route to Whitten, delivers a three-step drop, and you're that accurate, that's a tough play to stop. And if you're not patient defensively, that'll force you to get out of the three-deep zone and start coming up and pressing the wide receivers. Randall right now, seven for nine, Chris, for 98 yards. As he is clicking now with four wide receivers in. First and 10 from his 43. Zips it, complete to Parham, who has been one of his favorite targets tonight. That's good for five yards. Parham's third catch. Well, Randall's getting in the rhythm, and what they're doing is they're seeing Air Force in a three-deep zone, and it forces near the three-deep. The corners are forced to play at eight yards because they have deep outside coverage, so the hitch and the three-step and the quick throws are going to be there all night. They're going to make Air Force come up and try to play them man-to-man -man and try to take something away. Now, if you take that away, you got to get your hands up as a defensive lineman and knock those quick passes down. More challenges ahead for Air Force. Four receivers remain in for the Hokies. Randall, quick step, drop, and a completion. A good tackle by Mayo on Justin Hamilton. Yeah, he kind of slid into that tackle, but I'll tell you what, he kept his awareness and his wits about him, was able to secure the tackle. Again, you're seeing Virginia Tech running that quick step passing game. Now what you're going to see pretty soon is the hitch and go. You see, this is a nice break by Mayo. He plays with his feet underneath him right there. He's going to slide into the tackle, but he still has the awareness to grab him up. Nice job. Good athletic move, actually, to get those hands up. Mayo starting all 13 games this season, started all of them last year as well. Third and three with four receivers for Randall. And this is the fourth consecutive play they got four wides. Schlegel again, this time forcing the fumble. Randall picks it up, but he's dropped behind the line of scrimmage, and Schlegel so quick and so disruptive. Well, they're going to start finding a solution for Schlegel on the blitzes, and what they'll do, they move him around. That time they brought him from the outside. He comes from the inside, he comes from the outside. He's causing pressure on Randall. Schlegel working his magic again. And Virginia Tech will be forced to punt. Vinny Burns. Great hang time. It falls into the end zone as Tech was unable to get to it in time. 40-yard punt. Air Force has it on the 20 when we come back to San Francisco. to do with these? The answer? Try delicious diamond nuts on all your favorite foods, like walnuts and stuffing, or on oatmeal. It's a great way to add texture and taste to just about anything. Wholesome, delicious diamond nuts. They top everything. Try diamond glazed nuts, now available in snack sizes. Word has it someone here is trying to make a collect call. Calm down, people. All you gotta do is dial down the center with 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-T-T. -L -L it's free for you, cheap for them. What do you say we get up out of here and go hit a disco? Or not. Save on every call. Dial 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls. Get up! Pontiac. 
fuel for the soul. Still doing those bills, hon? <laughs> Just resting with a credit card balance. <laughs> You've been feeding on those high interest rates. <laughs> I just switched our balance over to a Capital One no-hassle card. Oh. We're going to save 500 bucks a year. 500 bucks? Switch your high-interest balance to the Capital One no-hassle card for the nation's lowest long-term fixed rates. You could save up to $500 a year. What's in your wallet? It is the Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl. Rob Stone standing by now with the CEO and president of Diamond of California. Rob. Well, Michael, why the decision to have Diamond get affiliated with college football through this inaugural San Francisco Diamond Bowl? You know, we uh, launched a new line of snack nuts, snack walnuts, and most people know of walnuts as a baking item, so we thought it was a great venue to introduce these new items. And it's a healthy food, too. That's kind of the, the, the tie-in for you guys as well. That is great. You know, a lot of people look for healthy ways to improve their lifestyle, and walnuts are really good for, your, for you in a lot of ways. Uh, and uh, they've even had studies that have shown it could lower your blood cholesterol level by as much as 10%. Well, my blood cholesterol is kind of low this week, because I've been doing nothing but sucking them down. Thanks for the grab bag. I appreciate it, Michael. Hey, uh, our pleasure. Thank great you. All right, Rob, Michael Mendez standing by with him down there is Cherridge, as Chance Herridge rather takes it up close to the first down. Again, in order for Air Force to be successful, they need to have positive gains on first down. That's why they're batting 47% on third down conversion, because they usually do a good job on first and second down. To counter that, Virginia Tech wants to make sure they shut them down on first and second down and force them into a throwing situation, which obviously Air Force does not excel like and, they do in a running game. And you can see the numbers bear it out right there, Chris. Harris just one for six for 47 yards, and he's got two picks, second and one. Up, he's going to the air again. He's got a man wide open, but throws it behind. Don Clark. Clark was there, but Harridge just didn't deliver it. Yeah, the one thing Chance is not doing, he's not setting his feet before he throws. If he goes ahead and gets his feet set, he'll be able to deliver this football. See, he's going to get set up, and he's kind of throwing off of his back foot. He's got to let his feet get set, then deliver the football. And again, you see the trouble with the footing. That would have been normally a catchable ball. He would have been able to come back and get it, but again, he slipped, thus causing the incompletion. But Chance has got to get a time and develop. Get your feet set, then deliver don't Her be in a hurry. Yeah, Harris during the regular season completed 48% of his passes. Ten touchdowns and five interceptions. He's got two picks tonight. Harris holds on to it that time and gets the first down for the Air Force Academy. Capital One Bowl Week concludes tomorrow on ESPN at 9.30 Eastern Time. That's in the morning. That's 6.30 here. Chris Lee and Kurt break down all the day's bowl games on a special edition of College Game Day presented by Discover Card. John Navarre in Michigan taking on Rex Grossman and Florida. Outback Bowl from Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And two of those ball clubs have made 10 straight bowl games. We have another one, one of the other seven here tonight in Virginia Tech. Lots of hitting as Butler gets the pitch and picks up about four yards. Jimmy Williams, again, I talked about it earlier, the, the importance of people coming up and making tackles from their free safety spot. Now, what that sets up, though, if you keep running it and running it, that safety will start to get snoopy, and they hit it on the second play of the game. They hit the post route. Look for them to come back to that. But I don't know how much confidence they have in throwing a football. Chance has been struggling, putting the ball in the air a little bit, but it's there if they want it. Has not been there, just one for seven with two interceptions for Harridge. Is straight up the middle. He gives it to Massey, his fullback. Coles Colas, the junior from Plantation, Florida, making the stop. Virginia Tech's done a nice job of adjusting to the option. And again, the rules of playing the option you have somebody on the dive, which was Coles Colas there, somebody on the quarterback, somebody on the pitch. Nine sacks. First with DB. This is defense with 42 sacks coming into this game. Nine of them for DB and Polis. This is third and five. We'll see if Air Force airs it out. Airage will. And not even making a break on the ball was a Mezaga as Fisher DeBerry comes out and has some words for some of his. It uh, looks like he's talking to Anthony Butler. Yep. Not happy with the pattern that he ran. 
Yeah, every, they weren't on the same page offensively again when you try to throw the football, but he's trying to throw the ball downfield. They have people open underneath. You only need five yards. Be patient. Deliver the football. Everything is that does not have to be a 20-yard pass. Barker's second punt. He had a 43-yard first time out, and that one almost goes into one of the dugouts. In fact, it does. So Barker's shanks that one. Virginia Tech has good field position when we return. So? Well, technically you have to stick the landing. Sorry, Mr. Hall, patent denied. Oh, man. Game 7 in Aspen starts January 30th on ESPN2. Put your trust in tradition and service. Jack's Incorporated of Berwyn continues its quality, performance, and dependability guarantee in construction, industrial, and municipal equipment. Offering rental, sales, and service, we're the right choice. Aaron's Snowthrowers, available at Jack's, are the best-built snow removal machines in the industry. Aaron's manufactures premium products and has a machine for your snow removal needs. Aaron's, smarter by the yard. Experience true customer service. Jack's Incorporated, family-owned and serving you for over 35 years. That's $19.95 with late fees from your last rentals? Oh, but I had five days to return those, right? No, no, sir. You rented four movies. One five-day rental, three two-day rentals. You returned the five day at 10.30 a.m. on the fourth day, two days, days at 1 p.m. on the third day. day. So as I said, you owe $19.95 plus tax. There's a better way. With in-demand pay-per-view on AT&T Digital Cable, there are no returns or late fees. Just point, pick, and enjoy the best movies, sports, and events. In-demand pay-per-view from AT&T Broadband. It's the better way. ESPN2's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl. Brought to you by Diamond of California. Be sure to try Diamond's new line of Pebble Cook Glazed Walnuts, the perfect game time snack. And by 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls. It's free for you and cheap for them. Welcome back to San Francisco, the Oakland Bay Bridge, the uh, less famous of the two. Of course, the Golden Gate on the other side of the city in this beautiful, beautiful city. Hey, Spielman, look at that fan. <laughs> How about that? Happy New Year to you. I want to say a Happy New Year to my wife and kids. It takes me all day to run that roster down, but it's about 12 o'clock at home. We've got about 15 more minutes before the East Coast celebrates 2003. Jones knocked out of bounds. And a late flag as he was nudged once he was nearly out of bounds. Not a big hit, but enough to get the flag. That's a six-yard gain as we await the penalty. Yeah, Kevin Jones coming and saying, I, you know what, I much enjoy being the hitter rather than the hitty. That time he delivered a blow on Overstreet. Guys took exception to that, took a little shot on Kevin. Got to play smart football. You guys are all 5.0 students. Foul on the defense, 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. And these guys understand angles and directions, and, you know, they fly jets. <laughs> there's, there's a nasty get out of my way. And you see right there, you got to lay off. And, and, and Anthony understands that. He's got to pull off a little bit. Now, that's a little touchy for me. He kind of shook off a little bit. But, hey, you know, they're going to call it tight. you got to know what their officials are calling and let you know what to get away with and not get away with. That's a third personal foul called against Air Force already in this football game. Puts it down on the 30 where it is first and 10. Schlegel picked up on the blitz that time as Jones tiptoes his way for a couple of yards. Trevor Hightower among the Falcons making the stop. I'll tell you what, what Air Force is doing, they have a beat on when they think Virginia Tech's going to run the power row. Anthony Schlegel's going up there and meeting the lead blocker at the line of scrimmage, forcing the tailback, whether it be Jones or Suggs, to hesitate in the whole line, the defenders to catch up with their pursuit. But that's how you stop the power row. You penetrate, knock off the lead blocker, which is often the backside guard. Schlegel is just flying 100 miles an hour on every play and gets in on that tackle. Nicholas Taylor also converging. 
Yeah, good gang tackling because Monty Coleman came down from his defensive end, an undersized defensive end, but great speed and quickness. Is able to lay out and get her get the tackle around the legs and let his partners come in and clean up. Yeah, Coleman, 6'2", 245, actually converted linebacker his first season for number 42 at playing the defensive end spot after being a linebacker his first couple of years at the academy. He's a junior from Phoenix. So with that play, it's now third and five. Randall going with the short dump pass to Jones, and Schlegel tackle, tackles him, but not before Jones picks up the first down. Needed five, got seven. That's a nice job by Kevin Jones. It's a good read by Randall because they took the in route away by Whitman. And Bilo has a chance to come up and make a play on a third down, but Kevin Jones runs right through the arm tackle. Gets the first down right now. One thing Air Force can't afford, and they have four missed tackles, which is a big concern by defensive coordinators after a big layoff after your regular season when you go into a bowl game. And Randall, sort of the anti-Harrods tonight. He is 10 for 12, over 100 yards already at 111 through the air. Here's Suggs, part of the one-two punch. He already has one touchdown, and he lunges forward. Adrian Wright makes the stop. Six more yards for Suggs. That's a nice job by the Virginia Tech offensive line. Even though Air Force gets penetration, see Lee Suggs there. Just a tremendous back. He gets around that end zone, man. It's like gold to him. He'll find it. But what happened was that the Air Force blitzers gave up one for one. If you're blitzing, you want to hit the offensive lineman and shed. You want to hit and get. You don't want to stick on blocks. They stuck on blocks. The big Virginia Tech held them. Sucks was able to hit it up in there and get good positive yards. And on second and fourth, Chris, they go with two tight ends. A lot of action before the snap. For Air Force, Radzinski just come, came catapulting over the line. What happens is in, in the game. Offside, defense, five yards, previous spot. So Radzinski called for that offsides. We got NBA basketball coming your way tomorrow on New Year's Day. At 7 Eastern, the Raptors visit the Knicks. NBA Wednesdays on ESPN. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. You can see. Allen Houston leading the Knicks with 22.3 points a game. And the Knicks just six in the Atlantic Division. There's rumblings in New York. They don't like it when the Knicks aren't good, and so far they're not good. Allen Houston, though, he can light it up. I remember watching him in his rookie year out of Tennessee coming to the Detroit Pistons. He can fire away. Some more help there in New York. You can see them tomorrow against the Toronto Raptors if you want to get a little bit of a break from almost nonstop football. First and goal after the offsides, just inside the 10. For Virginia Tech, looking to take their first lead of the game. Wilford in motion. Randall hands it off to Suggs. And he pulls his way down close to the five yard line. Nuker and Hightower converging on the tackle, about a three yard gain for Suggs. Now, Buker did a nice job of getting skinny, defeating the double team, getting away, creating a pile, knocking Suggs' legs out from underneath him. All that in one quick play. There you go. You got to get skinny. When that double team comes, you got to get skinny. You're going to be in trouble. Buker, 6'5", 260. Not skinny. <laughs> Two tight ends. Now second and goal from the five. And a timeout taken by the Air Force Academy and Fisher to Barry. Needs a good defensive stand. Not too happy with the way his team has played tonight. Some untimely penalties after they took a 10 to nothing lead. Three personal foul penalties that offsides. Getting Tech a little bit closer to the goal line. They're down by a field goal here in San Francisco. Try delicious diamond nuts on all your favorite foods, like pecans on fruit salad or walnuts on pasta. It's a great way to add texture and taste to just about anything. Wholesome, delicious diamond nuts. They top everything. Try diamond glazed nuts, now available in snack sizes. Baby, baby, I got the
choose the Pontiac High Performance Play of the Year. Vote online at ESPN.com, keyword Pontiac. The winning play will be announced live on the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Pontiac, fuel for the soul. You know, ideas and inventions come from people in all walks of life. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? If so, Invention Submission Corporation has information to help you get started. ISC is America's largest inventor service firm. Call now and learn how to submit your idea to companies through ISC's data bank and apply for a patent. Even if your idea is just to improve an existing product, call for ISC's free information. For your inventor's information, call 1-800-652-0101. Rex Grossman and the Gators collide with John Navarre and the Wolverines. Touchdown. Capital One Bowl Week continues with the Outback Bowl. 11 a.m. New Year's Day on ESPN. There's one of the landmarks here in San Francisco, Coy Tower, sitting atop Telegraph Hill. So many great vantage points from which to see this beautiful city, and, and things have cleared up rather nicely after some heavy rains. and. Right now, Virginia Tech knocking on the door, down 10-7 with the ball on the five, second and goal. Fisher DeBerry took that timeout, called his old defense over there. Boys, we need to stop. This is Lee Suggs territory, but instead, Randall goes for Wilford. A wrestling match, and it's incomplete. A great job of coverage. West Crawley, number eight for Air Force, giving up the height advantage, and really fighting his rear end off to keep Wilford from coming down with it. Got the hand inside. Take a look at it. See, that's a nice, well-thrown ball. Again, it's a jump ball. It's, it's, a, it's a gamble you want to take. You see Crawley right there getting that hand right up inside there and getting a hand on the football. Now you're now it's a battle. Now you play keep away. Now I don't. I, I want to try to understand why they have a call an incomplete pass because usually on a tie, the offense gets the benefit of the doubt. That foot right there was inbounds when he caught the ball. That should be six points for the Hokies. So instead they call it incomplete and it's now third and goal. Randall, Burford. That time it's too low and away. And Wes Crawley, by the way, in making that defensive play, the play before, he's a guy who's missed the last couple of games with a broken clavicle, so he's playing in, a, in some pain and, and a strange call that time. Well, Frank Beamer is a good football coach. You have a guy that has 50 billion touchdowns rushing the ball. You have two timeouts left. I do not understand why they did not give Lee Suggs the opportunity to punch the ball in. All right, it was second and five, Chris. They had a couple of opportunities to do it, didn't do it. 23-yard field goal by Carter Worley. Knocks it home, and after falling behind 10-0, Virginia Tech has now tied it up. There is a start. There is a finish. And in the journey between, there are dreams. The NCAA Hall of Champions keeps these dreams alive for you. More than a museum, the NCAA Hall of Champions takes you on an interactive journey. Relive some of the most inspirational moments in collegiate sports history and walk in the steps of a student athlete. At the NCAA Hall of Champions, you'll find something for every fan. Discover what it means to be a champion. The journey begins inside. States Air Force Academy offers a four-year education like no other. The Academy focuses on four pillars of excellence, academics, military training, athletics, and character development. Cadets graduate with a Bachelor of Science degree and a commission as an Air Force officer. Just tied the game up. Carter Worley with the field goal. They went 46 yards in nine plays. Two to three minutes and 39 seconds. And Lee Suggs and company. Lee Suggs did not get the ball, even though it was second and goal from the five. And he didn't get it. You go up top both times. You know, you, you, again, you have a guy that's a great red zone, goal line, whatever you want to call him. End zone guy, and you don't give him the football. You have two timeouts. You have plenty of time left. Give him a chance to score. That's your bread and butter. He's a touchdown feed machine, him. man. Yeah, feed the machine. Got his got a touchdown earlier in this game. 
did Lee Suggs, 27th straight game in which he has scored a touchdown. That time he didn't get the ball. Short kick taken by one of the up men. And tackled down at the 35-yard line is Joe Schieffer, one of the backup halfbacks for the Air Force Academy. Well, it seems like to me that the traction is getting worse and worse out in that football field. We're seeing everybody slip. Time the kicker took one. He kicked the ball and fell in the back of his head. Well, we're going off with some grass stains on those <laughs> nice white pants. Yeah. He's, in, he's, he's over there explaining to the coach. Yeah, I'm, I just I slipped, coach. <laughs> Tra traction not so good here at Pac Bell. So first down from the 35. You figure Air Force is going to be content to go in with the tie, but let's see how they play it. Harridge hands it off to Butler. Butler, the speedy guy, keeps his legs churning and picks up about eight yards. And Jimmy Williams, again, from his free safety position, coming up and making a play, and I'm telling you right now, if they want to do it, Virginia Tech in the second half, look for Air Force to do this, is right for the post play. Fake the play action, run a guy in a post because your free safety is sitting at six yards off the line of scrimmage. So that'll do it for the first half. Air Force out to a 10-0 lead, but Virginia Tech has come back to tie the inaugural Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl. And as we send you to break, Mike Stahl, one of our camera guys, wishing you a happy <laughs> new year on the East Coast. The Gospel, according to ESPN, available now. Ever try to use a bank or broker to refinance your home? That's why we started eLoan. It's a better way to refinance. Needless paperwork? Gone. Lender fees? Gone. Waiting for a decision? Hours takes minutes. At eLoan, we believe everyone is entitled to the right loan at the lowest possible rate based on your credit, not your negotiating skills. You get your cash fast at a great rate. A bank shouldn't come between you and your money. That's why there's eLoan. Apply now at eLoan.com or call 1-800-ELOAN-20. From the moment it arrives, you sense it. Perhaps it's the authentic European roasting, or simply the rich, distinctive taste that is one of Europe's finest coffees. Let it envelop you and experience a pleasure that's purely Javalia Café. You won't find Javalia on any corner, yet it's within arm's reach. Call 1-800-299-7017 and we'll deliver two boxes of our exquisite European coffee for just $14.95. And now you'll receive our exclusive Thermal Carafe coffee maker, free, to ensure that you brew, serve, and keep Javalia at its freshest. If you enjoy Javalia, we'll send you more automatically. The free coffee maker and two boxes of freshly sealed Javalia Cafe, delivered to you with no further obligation. It's too delicious to let pass you by. Call 1-800-299-7017. If your passion is coffee, your pleasure will be Javalia. And glad to have you with us on the College Game Day Halftime Report halfway through the inaugural Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl. Earlier tonight over on ESPN in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, a matchup that we had anticipated since the announcement of the bowl pairings, Maryland against Tennessee in that Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. 16 of the last 18 matchups in this bowl game have been decided by seven points or less. And then there was this one. Maryland was pumped up, and that was our first clue that this would not be one of the storied nights for the team from Rocky Top. This on a fourth down play, what Scott a, McBride. What a great play call. You knew they wanted to get in there, stop the run, boot it out, easy touchdown, Maryland. Casey Clawson just throws one up for grabs. Jerome Cox coming up with the pick. Flag that was dropped on this play was on Tennessee. Maryland controlled the entire first half. They were up 17 to three at the break. Couple of big plays really just destroyed Tennessee. Well, this is a field goal by, attempt by Alec Wall. 41 goes far to the left. This could have given them some momentum going into halftime, but they missed it. And then in the second half, Derek Tensley getting a handoff, and that ball is knocked free. Turks all over the place. Dominique Foxworth dives on it. Maryland recovering it early in the fourth quarter. Here comes Scott McBride again. Tennessee tried to pound him, take him out of his element, make him not want to run the football. It was not successful. Maryland blows out Tennessee in Atlanta. The Turks 
back-to-back double-digit win seasons. In fact, they win 11 games for just the second time in school history. The Axel Liberty Bowl in Colorado State and TCU. Colorado State champion of the Mountain West. TCU co-champion in Conference USA. Bradley Van Pelt picked off by Jason Goss. Van Pelt, 4 of 19 for 24 yards against that vaunted Horn Frog defense. Sean Stilley throws a dart in here to LaTerrence Dunbar. And hits him in stride. Standing tall in the pocket, LaTerrence Dunbar in a nice little pattern across the defense. Touchdown, TCU. Actually, that would have been enough offense, but there was more trend from Ricky Madison. Yeah, right up the middle, nice touchdown, offensive line, but the whole story of the game was TCU's run defense, just shutting down Colorado State. Madison went for 111. TCU takes the Liberty Bell, and they will celebrate on Beale Street. 17-3, the Horned Frogs get the victory. They win 10 games. Colorado State, a terrific season as well, into double digits in victory. Cecil Sapp went over 100 yards against that great run defense, but almost all of it came on the very first series of the game, and after that, he didn't really get much. Let's talk a little bit about Tennessee. Tennessee's got a great bowl history. This is not one of the nights they will remember. Really, it was an embarrassing performance. Yeah, dismal performance for Tennessee. I think Phil Fulmer and his offense and defensive staff this offseason need to get together and start making some adjustments. I mean, this season was kind of, this game was a microcosm of the entire season. Mistakes, penalties, players fighting in the middle of the game. I mean, lack of discipline. Three points against a Maryland team. That's a good team, but come on. I'm, I, you'll never be able to convince me that Maryland, talent-wise, was that much better than Tennessee. But anytime you play against Ralph Friedgen and his team, a team that does play fundamentally sound, a team that doesn't hurt itself, you will be exposed. And I believe that Phil Fulmer and his staff were exposed by a better coaching staff at Maryland. Well, they were, and it was evident, obviously, by the score in this football game. But you look at this team. They came out of the gate. They were ready to play. They were excited to be at the Peach Bowl and playing this football game. But on the defensive side of the ball, E.J. Henderson, you can't say enough about this player. Came back for his senior season. He could have left last year for the NFL draft. He would have been a first-day pick in the NFL draft. He has back surgery in the offseason. Comes back to the football team. He's hobbling around during training camp, but he still stays with the team. Comes back to be an All-American at the end of the season. He is the leader of this football team. They rally around E.J. Henderson. That's why they're a great defensive squad and their head coach, Ralph Regan. Friedgen always finds the right button to push, whether it's heaving a chair above some guys' heads in the locker room or babying guys. He always seems to know just the right button to push to get his team to perform at peak efficiency, and they had another terrific season. We will continue here on the College Game Day Halftime Report after this. Some say he's still out wandering these hills, looking for his lost head. It's a true story. Okay, time to go to bed. For when you need it most. Uh-oh. Our longest lasting Energizer Max ever. What was that? Energizer Max. Do you have the bunny inside? Vote now on the Pontiac High Performance Play of the Year. This for the win for Florida State to upset Miami from 43 yards away. He missed it! Wide left! Here's Wallace pumping, looking, running to his right, looking, and he's going to be almost caught. Now he's running at the 25 and runs down the sideline, back to the 10. Now he's giving ground, goes around to the 10, to the left side, to the 5, touchdown! Crystal's going to throw for it. Got to get it off. They go for the ball game. Touchdown! Touchdown! Michael Jenkins on fourth and one! Final play of the game. Randall stops, throws it as far as he can. Count! Johnson closing in on the magical number. Gets the toss. Johnson, here he goes! This is 2,000 plus for Larry Johnson! Touchdown, Penn State! And he does it with style! To vote, log on to ESPN.com. Keyword Pontiac.
Year's Eve afternoon in El Paso means the Sun Bowl, Washington and Purdue. Purdue had already dropped a snap on a punt up a short Washington touchdown and Kyle Orton puts it on the ground again. Marquise Cooper scoop and score. Purdue's been doing this kind of stuff all season long. 17-7, Washington now up on Purdue. Here's Brandon Jones. He's going to put it on the ground, but oh, serendipity. Ray Williams recovers it for the touchdown, and suddenly the Boilers are alive. Ser Joey Ooh. Harris, serendipity oh. means accidentally finding good fortune. Oh. Much like Gilmore does right here. Strip score. He's a native of the state of Texas, gets a touchdown in his home state, 34-24, Purdue over Washington. Silicon Valley football classic, Georgia Tech against Fresno State. 26 ticks to go in the half. A.J. Suggs from Tech. This is, this is ill-advised, they call it in the train. D. Mesa picking it off, a pick six, 48 yards. Bulldogs take the lead, get the momentum, Mark. Chan Gailey watching, bummed, unhappy. Fresno State now going to Paul Penninger. They're trailing him. This is a third and 14 play. DeAndre okay. Gilbert, terrific catch. Gets the 14 and 54 more, 68 yards on the play. Set up a Rodney Davis touchdown. Here's Demarius Bilbo in there for Suggs. Rolls right. Bilbo in there and making plays. A dart to Jonathan Smith, 42 yards, 21-20. Jackets on top. Asen Asperuov kicked a field goal, and then Davis drives in the nail in the coffin. Right up the gut, 151 yards, a couple of touchdowns, Fresno State, 30 to 21. Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl in Boise. Boise State against Iowa State. Boise State down 3-0. Ryan Dinwiddie looking for Brock Forsey. Follow your blockers on the screen pass. That's what Brock Forsey does. Picks up the first down for Boise State. Brock Forsey led the nation in touchdowns. This is why that one put Boise State up 7-3. Third quarter, Iowa State had a three-point lead at the half, but Forsey goes in there again. Third quarter, going to just keep giving it to Forsey. Forsey would never give it to anyone else. Reverse! Lou Fanucci, 27 yards down to the 13-yard line, led to a Dinwiddie quarterback sneak. Boise State up 21-10, and then here comes Forsey again. Three touchdowns, 78 yards. Boise State stuck one in there to stick it to Iowa State just a little bit. 34-16, the final in that one. So, the Boise State win. The WAC sitting there in the clubhouse now at 2-1 and one in the standings for the Bowl Challenge Cup. ESPN will present a trophy to the conference with the best winning percentage among those conferences with at least three representatives in bowl games. The ACC looking pretty at 3-2. and two. Meanwhile, the Pac-10 has just been all hat and no cattle. They're 1-4 so far. A couple of games still ahead coming up. Big hat, though. Pac-10. Big hat, not much cattle. Very disappointing finish. Still got USC and Washington State to play though. Guys, as you look at this right now, Mark, who has made the biggest impression on you so far, either a team or a conference? Well, I think you have to look at the Big Ten. Obviously, they're undefeated right now, but you look at Purdue and what they've been able to accomplish this year. Of their six losses, they were by seven points or less, and Joe Tiller has nine of his offensive starters returning next year, 15 total starters coming back. So when you look at the Big Ten next year, you have to look at the Purdue Boilermakers. They've got a big nucleus coming back, particularly on the offensive side of the ball, as I mentioned, but this is a team that was in every single game that they lost this year, and they exploded the second half today against Washington. How about the WAC going two and one? I mean, the WAC conference seeking respect gets two wins, one over the ACC and one over the Big 12 conference. And I like Boise State, 12 and one to finish the year. And you know, a lot of people are gonna look at this game and say Iowa State really limped down the stretch. Were they really ready to play? Listen, Boise State was the better football team. We knew about their offense, but I was very impressed with their defense. Dan Hawkins defense showed up ready to play. Seneca Wallace still played fairly well. They still had weapons on that offense. They shut down Iowa State to 16 points. I'll tell you what, Boise State's a very good football team. They earned respect with the WAC Conference. You know, I think the WAC's in pretty good shape in the Bowl Challenge Cup. 667 winning percentage. I know the Big Ten's still unbeaten. They still have four games sitting out there. The Big East has a couple of big games sitting out there. They've got a shot. You've already got the Big 12 that's been eliminated. The SEC must win out if it wants to get a piece of this thing. So the WAC might end up taking home the hardware when all is said and done. We will continue on the Halftime Report after this. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl. Brought to you by Long Lasting Energizer. Do you have the bunny inside?
They call this art? I'll tell you what I call it, brother. <laughs> it symbolizes my frustration of committing to a phone plan I don't always need. You should be down at 10, 10, 2, 20, little dude. Yeah, it's a great phone service with no monthly commitment. With 10, 10, 2, 20, all calls up to 20 minutes or 99 cents. It's cheap, whether you use it a little or a lot. That is a great deal. Now, this speaks to me. It says cheap. Dial 10, 10, 2, 20. Brother. I am a soldier. An army of one. Even though I am part of the strongest army in the world, I am my own force. With the latest technology, training, and support, who I am has become better than who I was. And I'll be the first to tell you, the might of the U.S. Army doesn't lie in numbers. It lies in soldiers like me. Specialist Mark DeCarly. I am an army of one, and you can see my strength. We dream, we dream of stopping cancer. We dream of stopping cancer. We dream of shaping the future of housing. We dream of shaping the future of housing. I dream of curing Parkinson's disease. I dream of discovering new energy resources. I dream of ending world hunger. We dream. I dream. We dream. I dream. I dream. We dream. We dream. Menards is ringing in the new year with a sale too big to miss. Buy this big 10-gallon tote for just $2.49. Then fill it with anything you want and take 20.03% off the regular low price. Save on paint, hand and power tools, batteries, door hardware, and light bulbs. So put down your remote, pick up a tote, and save 20.03% at Menards. Hurry and Sunday. Save big money at Menards. Hey, how's that carburetor looking? Great. But not as good as my banana flam base. Thanks to AT&T Digital Cable and AT&T Broadband Internet, Rusty Wallace's crew can finally express their other passions. Whatever you're into, get into it more. Flip on AT&T Digital Cable and discover inspiration at the touch of a button. Hop on AT&T Broadband Internet and move as fast as your imagination will take you. Whatever your passion. Billy? Call us now to shift it to a higher gear. The goal never changes at schools like Michigan and Florida year in and year out. Those two programs are expected to compete for national championships. But when you don't reach that goal, certainly a terrific consolation prize is a matchup in the Outback Bowl against each other. For the first time, Michigan and Florida will square off New Year's morning on ESPN. Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, Mike Golick will be on the scene for us. From a setting like this, where else could we be but the home of the Buccaneers in Tampa, where New Year's morning, John Navarre of Michigan and Rex Grossman of Florida will have different agendas. John Navarre, Mike Golick, has had big numbers, but not big love in Ann Arbor this year. That's right, Dave. A lot of Michigan fans want John Navarre to walk the plank after three tough losses this year. Two close ones, one to Notre Dame and the other to Ohio State, then the blowout against Iowa. When you're the quarterback at Michigan, you're expected to make the big play to win the game. Now, on the other side, the numbers don't lie. The six-foot, six-inch quarterback has thrown just seven interceptions this year. He spreads the ball around well and doesn't make a lot of mistakes. So as John Navarre tries to right the ship, Bill, I know the Florida quarterback has a couple questions as well. You are right, Mike. There are a couple of questions about Mr. Grossman. The first involves 17 interceptions this year. We've learned from the coaching staff that in the last five games, none of those interceptions were Rex's fault. They either passed through receivers' hands or were tipped at the line of scrimmage, so he's learning the system. Second and more compelling is whether or not he's going to come out to the National Football League. The main reason he even has that choice is because he is the captain of his ship. He has won the respect and the love of his teammates and his coaches. This is the man who was second in the voting for the Heisman Trophy a year ago. There's a reason for that. We're going to see two outstanding quarterbacks competing in this game. And, Bill, as we look at the numbers this year from Navarre and Grossman, they're strikingly similar, almost identical, in fact, until you get to interceptions. The quarterback who throws the fewer New Year's Day may sail on home with a win in the first ever meeting between two of the most storied programs in college football here in Tampa. Let's send it back to the studio. Guys, thank you very much. You remember, this was a great New Year's Eve trip. Do you remember when we started the day? We told Mark if he would stay with us and pay attention the whole day that we'd get him a copy 
of the Fish On Marathon, the date with yes. Anna was on ESPN2. <laughs> Fish On, go. Mark. Thank you very much. Stay with us for the Thank second very half. Much. I'm Diamond in Wall at San Francisco Bowl, then you can enjoy that. He doesn't even have a VCR. He doesn't have a VCR? <laughs> DVD. Well, that's all I've got, my friend. Second half's coming up. Discover the amazing training secrets of America's finest baseball school with Dynamic Practice Organization, a revolutionary new instructional videotape. Dynamic Practice Organization features professional scout and instructor Tom Imansky with his famous building block approach to athletic training. This exciting instructional videotape features the same drills, techniques, and methods that have produced baseball world's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU national championship teams. Dynamic Practice Organization makes any coach look like a genius and organizes offensive and defensive practices that players of all ages and ability levels can't wait to attend and immensely improves team communication skills and even conditioning. This is the instructional video that's a winner. To order your copy for only $29.95, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 1-800-652-0101. This dynamic practice organization teaching video makes a great gift, too. Call now, 1-800-652-0101. There's no reason why that ball should have gone through Buckner's legs. There's no reason why any of the runs before that should have been scored. There's no reason why the Mets should have even been in the World Series. There's no reason why they should have won 108 games. They were outmanned by the Red Sox. The Red Sox had the most dominating players in baseball. The numbers had almost become sublime. There are numbers that are actually bigger than baseball. Laws of probability that supersede the rules of statistics. Things that are even bigger than the curse of the Bambino. Things that say that if you call heads 100 times in 100 seasons, that one of those times it's going to have to land heads. Welcome back to ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. Welcome back to San Francisco. Halftime just about over at the Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl. Tied up at 10 apiece. Air Force out to that 10-0 start. Virginia Tech, though, coming back to tie it up, Chris. And there really uh, were some questionable calls. Uh, things not really going Virginia Tech's way. No, actually, there were a couple. One was a fumble. They got a touchdown taken away. But I'll tell you what, Air Force is playing hard. Their defense has responded to this power running game by Virginia Tech. And Virginia Tech defense has responded to the triple option by Air Force. See the highlights there, Matt Ward taking it on in reverse. Going for six, and Lee Sucks. There's the fumble. That shouldn't have been a fumble. Chance Herridge overthrows his wide receiver. And we want a little option of our own. I don't know if Vegas is ready for the option, but he did a good job there. And Lee Suggs knowing how to get the ball in the end zone. He gets close, he smells it, he punches it in. So Fisher to Barry's team tied up at the half. His counterpart, Frank Beamer, standing by with Rob Stone. Well, Coach, dealing with that triple option, always a challenge for your defense. How, how have they responded to it? Well, it's better after the first series. Uh, uh, we, the, you know, it's so new, and they caught us the uh, second play of the game on the play-action pass. And, but I thought we played it much better, uh, as, you know, in the, into the second quarter. So hopefully we can continue to do that. That final drive, Chris Spielman upstairs was questioning, hey, how come Lee Suggs not getting the ball? That is by design, though, at that point for you, right? Well, we alternate him back and forth, and whoever's in there is in there, and that's, that's the way we've done it all year, and that's the way we'll do it uh, in this game. It's worked so far, Coach. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Lee Suggs' number is just 31 yards, but he did have the touchdown, and yes, he is back. A return man as well for this Virginia Tech team, and they get the ball to start off the second half. Taken at the 10 and tackled around the 25 yard line is Justin Hamilton, a flanker who also acts as a return man. Take a look at the rush yards in favor of Air Force, as you might expect, and the reverse on the passing side. No, I, yeah, a lot of that's deceiving, though, know, because you take a look at the 47 yards passing by Air Force. That was on one reception. Brian Randall, on the other hand, has been on the money. The total yards even, turnovers. Yep, turnovers, the two interceptions thrown by Chance Herridge. And, well, you talked about Randall. How about 10 for 14, 111 yards in that first half? Right away, give it to Suggs, and he drags a defender with him. Adrian Wright takes a ride for a couple of yards. That's a couple plays that Adrian Wright has made coming off the corner on a blitz and just catching the ball from the backside, not being accounted for by that Virginia Tech offensive line. Virginia Tech in the first half, 
falling behind 10 to nothing. Suggs, by the way, we showed you seven carries, 31 yards. Kevin Jones, seven carries for 24 yards. Second and eight after that two yard gain by Suggs. Randall's first pass of the second half is on the money to Wilford, but it's just a short gain as he is popped by Wes Crawley. Picked up five on that play, so third and three coming up. Anytime you're a predominantly three deep zone, what you're going to do, your corner's going to play off. There's a three step drop. It's a well thrown ball to Wilford on the out route, and Crowley comes up and has a great break on the ball. Why are you playing so soft? Because you're responsible for the deep half. The only thing you can do as a corner is break up a ball, make it limit the game. They did that. That's a good play for. Virginia Tech, it's also a good play by Crowley in the Air Force defense. Crowley grew up in nearby Sacramento, about 45 minutes or so away. Has quite a few family members watching the play. Schlegel offsides by ton. That's designed. Now you're hard counting. Why? Because Air Force hits you on a couple blitzes early in the ball game, and they hit you by timing up the count or the cadence of the quarterback. So Offside. I guarantee you. Defense, five yards to the previous spot. Yardage gives Virginia Tech a first down. Coach Beamer went in at halftime and said, look, start changing up your count. These guys are blitzing their time is enough. Change it up, force them to jump off sides, and it worked right there to perfection. Well, the penalties piling up, Chris, against Air Force. Now six penalties for 63 yards. They had three personal foul penalties in the first half. That's at least the second. That is, in fact, the second offsides that has directly led to a Virginia Tech first down. First and 10 from the 37. Two receivers to Randall's left. He goes to one of them, completes it to Whitman, who sidesteps one would be tackler and another. Whitman, good work with his feet. Picks up about nine yards on his fourth catch of the night. Yeah, Paul Mayo has a, a great position, a great break on the football. Read the split screen well. He's got to come up and make a play. And he especially cannot let the ball bounce outside. So he's got to keep that outside leverage out there. Force the ball inside because look where all the white helmets are coming. They're not going to be coming from the sidelines. They're going to come from the middle of the field. He has the corner or the outside flank player needs to force the ball back inside and let his pursuit make the tackle. Whitman takes a short break after making that catch. Second and one. Suggs gets it. And is close to the first down marker. A little bit too soon to tell as he is bunched up in the middle. Nicholas Taylor, number 95 among those making the stop. That's Virginia Tech's bread and butter, the power O. That's when you have a lead block by your fullback, the backside guard pulling around. And I give Air Force credit because they've been able to shut that down for the most part. Although Suggs did score the touchdown on that same play, it looks like Air Force made some adjustments at halftime defensively. And here's Doug Eastlick and Fisher DeBerry were talking about him being the unsung hero as he is the fullback makes the running game go and up to midfield on that carry is Suggs picked up three Anthony Schlegel from his middle linebacker spot does a good job of pursuing down the line of scrimmage hitting the play running downhill we were talking yesterday at lunch and said Chris you know when I get in trouble is when I start shuffling and going lateral when I start making plays I'm hitting the ball and hitting the, hitting the line of scrimmage, going downhill, making plays. That's the way you have to do it. That's why he plays about five yards deep, so he can get going downhill when he's not blitzing. And he shows blitz and backs off that time. Randall zips it out to Wilford, who makes the catch in front of Mayo. Picks up about six yards on that, so Tech going to that short passing game here early in the third quarter. Well, they have a mismatch out on the outside now. Once you're successful, you're gonna you're gonna come back. I guarantee you, but you're gonna come back with a hitch and go. You're gonna pump the out cut, then you're gonna send Wilford on the out and up, hopefully to get Mayo to bite on the out. Then you throw the streak route going down the corner of the end zone. Frank Beamer in charge at Virginia Tech. We have the uh, third and fourth longest tenured coaches at one spot in Division One football going against each other tonight. Wilford in motion and up too soon from the stance is the tight end Keith Willis. So Tech goes back five yards. All right, that's a lack of concentration on Keith's part. And I'm going to tell you what happens is that offensive lineman. Full start, offense. Five yards to the previous spot. Still third down. They get jumpy and they get anxious. When you're playing a blitzing team, they want to make sure, see him take that hard step inside. That is because he is responsible for that C gap. He wants to protect that. He took that hard step, 
to protect that gap just in case they were blitzing. Forgot to snap count them. Wait till that ball snap. So the third and two turns into a third and seven, and now out of the shotgun, Randall has four receivers. Three of them to his right. And he goes right up the middle and is tackled right away by Nicholas Taylor. A good coverage by the Air Force secondary. And it now is the third sack of Randall tonight. When you bring pressure from the outside, you always want to have what they call a power rusher from the inside, taking away a throwing lane or a running lane. That time was executed perfectly by Nicholas Taylor in the Air Force defense. And he burns in for a second punt, and good pressure by Air Force. And a fair catch called for, and it goes into the end zone. Otis Palmer lets it go by him. And Air Force will get it. 20 after a 52 yard punt, Air Force gets the ball. What am I supposed to do with these? The answer try delicious diamond nuts on all your favorite foods, like walnuts and stuffing, or on oatmeal. It's a great way to add texture and taste to just about anything. Wholesome, delicious diamond nuts. They top everything. Try diamond glazed nuts, now available in snack sizes. All new, 220 horses, and one more thing. So, so. Thanks a lot, sir. No, thank you, Mr. Metzger. I appreciate it. Next. Mike the Godfather with the back. Winter X Games 7 in Aspen starts January 30th on ESPN2. There is a start, there is a finish, and in the journey between, there are dreams. The NCAA Hall of Champions keeps these dreams alive for you. More than a museum, the NCAA Hall of Champions takes you on an interactive journey. Relive some of the most inspirational moments in collegiate sports history and walk in the steps of a student athlete. At the NCAA Hall of Champions, you'll find something for every fan. Discover what it means to be a champion. The journey begins inside. Francisco Air Force gets the ball, tied up at 10 apiece with Virginia Tech. Happy New Year again to all of you in the Eastern time zone as we play on here in the third quarter. Harridge holding on to it, and the quarterback gets a great seam, breaks an arm tackle, and motors all the way up to the 41 yard line. Quarterback standing by with Al Rob Stone. Rob. Pam, the Vic franchise continuing at Virginia Tech. Michael's younger brother, Marcus, joining me now, a redshirt freshman. You've been on every road trip. Has it been difficult kind of waiting to follow in your brother's footsteps here at Tech? Yeah, it's been very difficult, you know, just sitting out watching, you know, just trying to learn, you know, from this year. But I think I've been doing all right, you know, learning trying to get smarter and stay focused for the upcoming spring. Tech coaches were telling us that you're very involved in, in the practices, training with the first team. You're in all the team meetings. You're, you're on all the road trips as well. What have they told you is kind of their preliminary plan, at least for you and your future in Blacksburg? Well, I, I really don't know. As of yet. I, I mean, I, they brought me in here to be a quarterback, and that's what I'm going to be. You know, I, I, their plans, I don't know what their plans are. You know, they, they haven't let me know that yet. Your brother Michael has a fairly important game this weekend. Has he uh, talked to you about his first playoff competition? Nah, I ain't talked to him about that. <laughs> but, you know, he, he talked to me about how the NFL was, and he said it was very, you know, fast-paced game, real different from college. So I just subscribe from that. Marcus, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Good luck at Tech. Right. Thank you, Rob. And now Marriage pitches it to Butler. And Anthony 
and he doesn't get much. In fact, he loses another yard. And of course, Marcus Vick, Michael, uh, Michael doing a terrific job. Boy, what a season he has had with the Falcons. And Marcus was running the scout team. He was Chance Heritage in practice. I'm sure he did an outstanding job. And I'm, I'm about Marcus Vick, and I would call Michael and I'd say, send money, Michael. <laughs> you have enough of it, help little bro out. He has a couple of bucks he can spare. Oh, yes. He's an outstanding quarterback. Marcus is certainly an outstanding prospect. They're very excited about him. The problem is Brian Randall's only a sophomore, very competitive, and it's going to be tough to take the job away from him. Third and 12, and up the middle, Butler busts loose for the first down. So after losing one yard on successive plays, they pick up 14 in the first down. Again, that's the second time this ball game on third down they've been able to pop the draw because there's no power rusher. See everybody working up inside. Butler makes a nice cut and he gets good blocking by his receivers downfield. Saw Kenny Smith in there getting the block. And also, Johnny Clark knocking people down, knocking the pursuit angles off by blocking downfield. Big plays happen when you block downfield. Butler is a big play speed guy running wise. Harridge pitches it to Clark. Nick it's higher, it's 24, and higher picks up four. A lot, of, a lot of guys in this Air Force offense get carries. Higher, Clark, Ward, the running backs, the halfbacks we've seen get carries, along with Butler, Stevens, and Palmer. Keeps him fresh to do a lot of running. They are asked to do a lot. Not only asked to run the football and running option, but again, for big plays to happen downfield in the running game, you need receivers blocking downfield. These guys do that very well. Air Force trying to finish a season leading the country in rushing for the first time, and they're well behind their pace. Harridge gets it knocked down right in front of him by Mike Daniels. Sophomore from Fairfax, Virginia. Talk about playing the option. You play disciplined defense. That time, Mike Daniels playing his responsibility. Seeing Chance on the rollout. Gets his hands up, times it perfectly, shows a good vertical. Almost got a pick. Daniels played in all 13 games, started one of them this year, and almost indeed came up with that interception. And no completions now for Harridge, by the way, since the second play of the game, that 47 yard completion, that set up the first touchdown. Third and six. Harridge keeping it this time on the ground. And he has stopped a couple of yards short of the first down. Well, looking over there down at the sidelines and looking at Fisher DeBerry. There's no sign of the punt team coming on. And that's a play that there's kind of their, been their, their go-to play tonight. And what it is, it's the quarterback's off-tackle play. And you're essentially getting three lead blockers. That's why it takes time for Virginia Tech people to get off blocks and make a tackle. Chance just piles it in there. And they are indeed going for it now. Fourth and one from the Tech 38. It's a long one. Harridge pitching it and slipping down short of the first down boy. Anthony Butler would have had it, but he lost his footing. Tech gets the ball back. Again, you got to be aware of the surface that you're playing on, and you have to keep your feet underneath you. And when you make a cut, you got to plant your outside foot and cut off. You cannot cut off your inside foot. It's not AstroTurf. It's slippery grass. So instead of the first down, Butler goes down early, and Tech gets the ball back on downs. Now on a special edition DVD, Barbershop, jam-packed with over two hours of bonus features, including blueprints and outtakes. When he get through, his face gonna be real smooth like Gary Coleman. <laughs> Barbershop, buy or rent it Wednesday. What do you call a sports sedan? That's more sports than sedan. Some sort. new 220 horsepower Mazda 6. Can I use the phone? That's cold. Don't disrespect.
inspect a man's house, just uh, right down the center. 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-T-T. It's free for you and cheap for them. You okay in there, man? Save on every call. Dial 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls. When you have money problems, just going to the mailbox can be frightening. The bills and balances keep piling up. You're scared to even look. It's the same when the phone rings. You know it's another creditor, so you're afraid to answer. I don't know how my debt got so out of control. I thought bankruptcy was the only way out. And then I called Ameridad and found the answer. Every day, Ameridad helps more people with money problems. We're a nonprofit organization offering free consultations and solutions to consumers seeking to eliminate their debt. Now I don't have to struggle to keep up my monthly payments. And I won't spend the next 20 years paying off my credit card bills. Ameridad contacted my creditors. They were able to get my interest rates reduced, and my payments were almost cut in half. Now my balances are dropping, and I only have one small monthly payment. Call this number, and in minutes, regardless of your situation, Ameridad can help change your financial future. Ameridad gave me my life back. Ameridad, helping America get out of debt. When you play in a muddy field, it's important to have clean shoes and not necessarily clean on top, but clean on bottom. You see guys there kicking off the dirt. And why you need clean shoes on the bottom? Because of this reason. When you're on a slippery field, you got to play with your feet underneath you and you need to cut off the outside foot. That foot he cut off of, he slips. That was his inside foot. His body weight took him down. Played with your feet underneath you, cut off the outside foot, you don't slip. But instead, Butler went with that inside foot, slipped down short of the first down and takes over. Randall in the air to Eastlick, his big fullback, and Eastlick is very close to the first down. Eastlick with 15 catches on the season coming in. That's his first catch tonight. And Chris, since Air Force went up 10 nothing, they have done absolutely nothing with the football. They have an interception, a punt, an interception, a punt, the half ended, and then they gave it up on downs. Well, one of the reasons of why they moved the ball because they completed a pass. That loosened up Virginia Tech. They haven't completed a pass since Virginia Tech's defense has tightened up. They're getting more confidence in the back end. Marriage, you just saw on the phone, just one of nine with two interceptions. Wilford on first down. Gets close to another one as he catches that pass in front of Jeff Overstreet. Randall Sharp tonight, he's delivering that outcut, and that's not an easy throw to make, and it's all on timing. That's why it's so impressive. Wilford's just pushing the corner, breaking out. They're setting him up for the out and up. The corners are going to start getting overexcited, anxious. Crawley and Overstreet, they want to make a play. Pretty soon they're going to get bumped with that out and up. Yeah, they have yet to go with that out and up, and he's sort of a home run ball. That's three catches on the night. Make it four for Wilford. Six different Hokies have caught a pass from Randall this evening. Eastlick, oh my goodness, what a huge hole up the middle. And the big fullback rumbles for a first down. Picks up 16. They're starting to establish a line of scrimmage. And had another missed tackle. That's five on the evening. But you see Eastlick, a guy that normally doesn't get a running chance. Schlegel gets pushed out. You got Trevor, number 44. Overrunning the play. Now that's gap sound responsibility, but you got to be in position to make the play. A big, big game for Eastlick, the fullback, and now they go a little speed. Kevin Jones bursts up the middle for about eight. Capital One Bowl Week concludes tomorrow on ESPN, 9.30 Eastern Time in the morning. Chris, Lee, and Kirk break all the day's bowl games down. A special edition of College Game Day presented by Discover Card. And then it is the Outback Bowl from Raymond James Stadium. John Navarre in Michigan takes on Rex Grossman in Florida. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Bowl Challenge Cup. The, what's that? The Big Ten has yet to lose a game. Yeah, the Big Ten was under some scrutiny at the beginning of the year. Doing well as postseason. Jones with another carry on second and short, and he picks up the first down as we take you back to the Challenge Cup. Big Ten 3-0 so far. We'll see Michigan play tomorrow morning. Ohio State has a pretty big game coming up on Friday on ABC for the National Championship. And uh, Mountain West, Air Force's conference 0-2. Colorado State losing convincingly. Boy, TCU's defense today was unbelievable at the AXA Liberty Bowl. They're running the ball as well as anybody I've seen all year. 
A lot of purple hats on that football. Very impressive. TCU finishes 10 and 2 on the season. Suggs now in, and he gets the pitch. Huge hole again. Schlegel with the tackle, but Tech looking good on this drive. You know, last time Virginia Tech was in this position, we saw them go to the air twice. And Rob Stone asked Coach Frank Beamer about that. He said, Chris was up there questioning it. Well, I, I'm going to see if I'm right because I guarantee you that ball will be put on the ground. Got to back up. I got to The strategy might be a little bit different. Yes, this time. I do. Especially with 22 back there. Second and five on the eight. They are 14th in the country rushing, but only 77 yards so far this evening. Suggs is behind Eastlick. Gets the ball. Already with one rushing touchdown. So the ball is loose. But the officials say that Tech has retained possession. I'll tell you what's happening. They're getting a good job. Luke Owens pushing inside, knocking Hightower out. You see Lee Suggs, he just keeps driving, 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 driving. Again, they're beating him up at the line of scrimmage. First and goal from the one. A couple of tight ends in, some big, bigger, bulky guys as Suggs. He's in the backfield. He's the touchdown maker, and he makes another one. Lee Suggs has broke the Virginia Tech's touchdowns tonight. Why not? Luke Owens leading, power O, that's your, that's your best play, you've run, you've been running it for the past 50 years. You got the, one of the top touchdown makers in the history of college football, give him the ball. And even though Frank questioned me, questioning him, <laughs> what'd he come back to? Mr. Suggs. You listen to you, old big guy. Yeah. And Suggs matching his uniform number, 22. That's his 22nd rushing touchdown of the season. 24 overall. And Virginia Tech takes its first lead of the night as Lee Suggs finds the end zone for the second time. Anytime, Scott. See you. Arm strength, quickness, agility, and body control. The essential elements of the winning defensive baseball player. And with Coach Emansky's Defensive Drills video, you'll learn the amazing training secrets of America's finest baseball school. The Defensive Drills video features revolutionary training techniques developed by professional scout and instructor Tom Emansky. Techniques that get results, producing baseball world's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU national championship teams and even a gold medal in international competition. In a recent review, Collegiate Baseball Magazine exclaimed, with Coach Emansky's techniques, the future of baseball is here today. Even top professional players are impressed. Just ask Major League Superstar Fred McGriff. I'm so impressed with the instruction videos by Coach Emansky that I've given them my full endorsement. When you watch them, you'll know why. The Defensive Drills video is available now for immediate shipping. It makes a great gift and benefits players of all ages and ability levels. To order your copy, call toll-free 1-800-233-0500. That's 1-800-233-0500. Call now. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl. Brought to you by Barbershop on VHS and special edition DVD this Tuesday. And by the all-new 220 horsepower Mazda 6 sports sedan. That's the trophy they're playing for. The uh, inaugural Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl or Golden Gate Bridge. Replica, not the whole bridge. You can see the bridge on top of that trophy. The Virginia Tech cheerleaders. Lee Suggs building on his Big East records now. 56 total touchdowns, 53 rushing touchdowns in his illustrious career at Virginia Tech. Brian Blue, one of the backup quarterbacks, the return guy, gets it out to around the 31 for the Air Force Academy, which 
has had problems offensively ever since they went up 10 nothing. Just to go back, that slip cost Air Force a first down. Virginia Tech treated it like a turnover, in which it was. Anytime you get a fourth down stop, and to me, that's points off turnovers. Although it will not show up on a stat sheet like that, that's what it ends up being. Butler slipping on what would have been a first down. Tech got the ball back and drove it all the way down the field. 60 yards took them two minutes and 45 seconds. Sugg scoring the second touchdown of the night. The Hokies have their first lead. Higher in motion. And a handoff up the middle to Butler. He spins around, picks up about four. Mikhail Baki came in there, delivered a blow on Steve Massey. But the one thing I always tell young linebackers when you come in and fill a hole in isolation, which that play was, you never give one for one. You can have 25 fullback knockdowns with zero tackles. If you give one for one to the fullback on the isolation play, I don't care if you knock him in the next week, he still wins. Harris pitching it. Butler running for the first down this time keeps his feet. As he is taken down at the 44 yard line. Let's go down to Rob Stone. Pam, the Falcons right now going without halfback Leotis Palmer. He spent that last series on his back on the bench trying to loosen up a tight back. He spent some time behind the bench running, trying to loosen up. He finally just grabbed his helmet, but you see him. He's wandering over here now to try and loosen up and uh, see if he can get back into the game. Thanks, Rob. And boy, that's a huge loss. Palmer, so valuable. Uh, as a running back and also through through two touchdown passes this year Chris and also the, the good thing about Leotis he wants to come back and be a part of the graduate assistant program that they have at uh, Air Force serve the rest of his duty with the Academy starting all games the last two seasons for the Academy Harris going down for higher who runs into the defensive back incomplete as he runs into Wilds no flags Again, now Chance is looking to that outside receiver. He has a post player open. Why? Because in this defense, when you're defending the triple option, the free safety is responsible for the pitch man right there. He's open inside. He's going to the outside guy. He's got the outside guy four times. He needs to look into the post, and the coaches in the press box need to tell him when he comes out the field, Chance, look to the post. Don't look to the sidelines. It's there. You saw Harris throw his hands up almost like he thought but the uh, correct pattern was applied, so it's second and ten. Harridge, very late pitch, gets it out to Don Clark, and good job that time by the Virginia Tech defense, Jimmy F. Williams pushing. Uh, again, Jimmy Williams, and that's the free safety, and he's playing at six yards back. Now, another play that they have in their arsenal they have not yet used is they can fake the option have chance run down and step back to throw the ball send the guy in the post because Jimmy Williams is playing tighter he's getting more confident he's making tackle from sideline to sideline which is not right for a free safety you need to make him honest Williams has done a good job tonight Chris he has six tackles third and nine for the Falcons Harridge looking and again it's batted down at the line of scrimmage that's happened a couple of times Tim Sandage that time getting the big paws up. Sanders does a good job. He's not getting much of a push, but what does he do? He doesn't give up, stays in the passing lane, times his jump perfectly, knocks it down. Now, Jim Williams is playing for Willie Pyle. So they want to take a look at Jimmy Williams. He's doing a nice job. Here's Robert Barker's last punt was a 15-yard shank. That one also not pretty, but it takes a bit of an Air Force roll and will be down just outside the 20-yard line. 34-yard punt, no return. Tech scored a touchdown last time and had the ball. We get it back when we come back. Come on. Bobby, what am I supposed to do with these? The answer? Try delicious diamond nuts on all your favorite foods, like walnuts on pancakes or almonds and stir-fry. It's a great way to add texture and taste to just about anything. Wholesome, delicious diamond nuts. They top everything. Try diamond glazed nuts, now available in snack sizes. All new, 220 horses, and one more thing. So, so.
all new 220 horsepower Mazda 6. Starts January 30th on ESPN2. 39 and 0. Connecticut is perfect. The 2003 NCAA Women's Basketball Championship on ESPN and ESPN2. There's some palm trees outside of Pac Bell Park here near China Basin in downtown San Francisco. Checking that right field line. It's kind of built for Barry Bonds. 309 down the line. And there's some fans sitting out there, maybe waiting for Barry to hit another one out. They're uh, out in the center field bleachers. This is just a beautiful, beautiful park. Must be great to see baseball and a treat to be downtown to do football. As the Niners play uh, down at 3Com, a little bit south of the city. As Jones is bottled up after a short game, give him a yard or two. It's a big opportunity for Air Force now to create some type of field position for their offense. Fisher DeBerry's offense has not done much. A couple of punts, a couple of interceptions, lost the ball on downs. So uh, it's been rather non existent for Chance, Harridge, and company since they went up 10 to nothing in this game. Again, last possession, they look for Wilford on the out cut. Still waiting for him to bust one loose. He's to the right of quarterback as Jones slips down on this slick turf and loses a couple. You gotta recognize as a player when you're on slick turf, oftentimes it does not help to start making many moves and cuts and all those types of things. Hit it up in there with some authority. Natural grass here at Pac Bell Park and just a, a ridiculous amount of rain over the last few weeks in the San Francisco Bay Area. There's been flooding. Some of the buildings downtown, some of the stores I went into actually had their lower levels closed off because of flooding there. So a lot of water has saturated this field. Third and ten after the slip. After Air Force, you want to blitz now to force them to blitz. Reed, there you go. And Randall has nowhere to go, Chris. A lot of blue pants. He goes down. That's yeah, a design quarterback draw. And again, Air Force does a good job of playing gap responsibility. And they have people blitzing from the outside, but they have their inside rushers doing a bull rush or a power rush for this exact reason to protect against the quarterback draw. Nobody's getting upfield. They're kind of scooting down the line of scrimmage, and you have people pursuing with football. Well executed. It's a matchup there between Jake Grove and Anthony Schlegel. And Schlegel did the, got the better of him that time. Vinny Burns punt rolls out of bounds at the 47 on the tech side of the field. Only a 29 yard punt. NBA basketball coming your way tomorrow. New Year's Day. Allen Houston and the Knicks taking on the Raptors at 7 Eastern time. All part of NBA Wednesdays on ESPN. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Vince Carter's missed the last 11 games for the Raptors. They're 1 in 10 without him. He's not expected to play tomorrow. And when he does play, he's very good. But now, Chris, the Toronto Sun newspaper reporting that the Cavaliers are trying to work out a trade to get Vince down in Cleveland. I want to know what they're going to give for him. The oldest Palmer back in for Air Force, and he pitches it to Matt Ward. And Ward, who had a big play earlier in this game, a 15-yard touchdown run. It's a nice game that time. That's the same play, just the opposite way. Leotis Palmer is going out now. It looks like his back is bothering him. He's got his head down. It's a, it's a reverse play again. They scored a touchdown in the first series off it. You get a good crack black block. There you go. Chance Harris trying to get something done. Almost got a nice tackle there on Ronyell Whitaker, the corner. Chance getting away, Chance. <laughs> Not afraid to go out there and block. Harridge is 5'11", 185. <laughs> Picked up five on that play to Ford. Now right up the middle, it's Butler. And he goes for the Air Force first down, picking up eight. Air Force says, you're going to run the power road down our throat. We're going to take our shot and try to run the power road down your throat. That's a play that it looks to me like Anthony Butler likes to run. It gives him the opportunity to get back at eight yards and read the defense. You see the guard pull. Here he comes. He hits it up inside and does a great 
job of getting extra yards and getting his shoulders downfield. Not too many cuts, blowing it up in there. And the rush yards piling up for the academy. Butler. And we talked to the offensive coordinator Chuck Peterson before the game. He said he wanted to get him at least 10 touches in space, and he's gotten at least that tonight. He, he's their big inside runner. He's their most explosive and their fastest back. He's a 40 guy. I'll say that seven times without <laughs> stumbling. See, uh, that's a great average right there. Anytime 5.7, that's outstanding average. Second and six after the four yard game by Butler. Well, Carriage barely keeps his feet. Fortunate not to go down in the backfield. Picked up a couple. That, that ended up being a unintentional quarterback draw. He almost lost the ball when he went to throw the football, but he was able to keep his composure and get two yards. Okay. Manageable third down for Air Force. Which is where they like it, Chris. Obviously not a team that is made for third and longs. The third quarter has come to a close. Air Force is falling behind, but they're getting close. According to ESPN, available now. a day three times a week you can get real results that can change your entire body with over 60 health club quality exercises and up to 410 pounds of resistance it's like having an entire gym in your home Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less you can own a Bowflex with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month Call and ask for a free video and brochure. And check out the entire Bowflex lineup. Or visit us on the web today. Redefine your body with Bowflex. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, do it. come on. Catch the ball before you run with it. Let's Basketball go. 101. Basketball 101. Tell somebody. Tell somebody now. Oh, what are you doing? There you go. Just like we drew it up. Tangled up with Rose. San Francisco just getting underway here in the fourth quarter with Virginia Tech leading Air Force by a touchdown and for those of you watching in the central time zone Mike Weir has a message for you <laughs> Mike Weir our handheld guy and boy he's been in the trenches all year for us he took Chris. a couple shots this year Mike does a good job all our guys do a great job yeah, Mike down there uh, Bob Stone's number one camera guy and happy new year to friends in the in the central time zone as you hit midnight still got a couple hours to go here on the west coast Adam Cole with that carry for the Air Force Academy down seven now battling back in this game after taking a 10 to nothing lead and uh, Virginia Tech two touchdown runs by who else but Lee Suggs is uh, Fisher to Barry team not getting to the to a bowl last year actually a great job they were six and six last year and picked the finish second to last in the Mountain West this year and instead they've gone eight and four so far and have gotten themselves into this bowl game you no know, it's it's they had a chance for first down the timing of that play was messed up a little bit Adam Cole had to slow down and chop his feet before he handled the handoff 
which caused the Virginia Tech guys to come in there and make the play. Now, if Massey was in there, I think the timing between Harris and Massey, and remember, the triple option is all based on timing. That time, the timing was off a little bit, which gave the Virginia Tech defense time to get to the football. That was Cole's first carry. Nine runners other than Harris have touched the football and rushing plays. Air Force one for two on fourth downs tonight. They're going for it on fourth and one now. And Harrich gets it as he ducks his shoulder and picks up a couple. That's a play they've been going to. It's a quarterback off tackle with three lead blockers. And the Virginia Tech did a great job. In fact, Chance Harrich didn't end up at the first down, but his forward progress gave him the first down. So Air Force now two for three on fourth downs. Again, coming into tonight, they were 16 of 22 on the season. Fisher to Barry. Keeps the sticks moving. You know, it's impressive how Air Force just sticks with their game plan. They don't panic. Even though they get down, they don't panic. They're going to run it. They're going to run it. They say you stop us first, second, and we might pop you on the third time. Harris looking to pass. He hasn't completed one since the first quarter. That one's a jump ball, and it is incomplete. Darnell Stevens had his hands on it. He was battling with D'Angelo Hall. D'Angelo Hall did a good job. I'll tell you, Stevens did a nice job of turning into D'Angelo Hall, thus becoming a defensive back and knocking that one away. Chance Harris under pressure by, pressure by Jimmy Davis. Again, having to throw his off his back foot, kind of throwing a balloon up there. Looking for that outside receiver. He had his tight end down the post. I'm telling you, the post is there. And they're not going for it. Uh -huh. Harridge uh, completed his first pass tonight, Chris. Since then, he has two interceptions and nine incompletions. Second and ten. Holding on to the football, and he gets popped by a couple of guys in those red jerseys. Let's take it down to the field and Rob Stone. Pam, no team in the country better in the red zone this season than Air Force. They've converted 53 of their 57 chances coming into tonight's game. 41 of those touchdowns. And it's because the Falcons don't give any of that lip service. They spend a great deal of time on it in practice. They even have the lines in the red zone painted, I'll give you one guess, red on the practice field there at the academy to further instill the goal of getting points whenever they're within the 20-yard line. Right there, one for one so far tonight with that touchdown. And in the red zone now as Butler goes forward, about a yard short of the first down, tackled by Mikel Baki. And also Jimmy Williams coming up from his free safety spot to secure the tackle. But I tell you, Anthony Butler looks like a miniature Lee Suggs to me, the way he hits it up in there on that off tackle. Oh, that's a nice job of Air Force winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. Their pads were lower than the hooky pads. Butler at 5'9", 195. He's a sophomore from Newark, California, back in his home state tonight. Again, another fourth down. Two for three so far, and Butler gets it. So another fourth and one, second straight fourth and one. And the Fisher to Barry's guys have converted on this drive. take time now to wish Happy New Year to the men and women in uniform serving around the world, watching tonight's San Francisco Bowl in 180 countries aboard ships at sea on the American Forces Network, especially the U.S. Air Forces in Europe, members of the Triple Nickel Fighter Squadron and Aviano Air Base in Italy. We hope everything is going well for you. And that 2003 will be a healthy and happy one, and that was not a healthy carry. Jimmy Williams closed early on Anthony Butler. One thing you can try to do now to, to start countering Jimmy Williams because he's basically running on block from his free safety position is a lot of times you want to start throwing crackbacks on him. That means you'll take the wide receiver. Instead of running him off or running him to block the corner, you have him turn inside and crack Jimmy Williams as he's coming to, to fill. If you do that, you might have an opportunity to make a corner miss a hole. because Jimmy Williams hasn't missed any tackles tonight. Outstanding game by him. We have him with eight tackles so far tonight, Chris. This drive now going on to its 12th play. They've only gotten the 34 yards, but they're converting the fourth down. Butler slipping, looks like he's on skates. Jonathan Lewis making the stop after a small game. 
And Anthony Butler missed the hole. You know, he's run the draw well twice tonight. That time he made a bad cut, bad vision. You see right here, he's going to get the ball back and tail back. Now Anthony Butler's going to run here. Now outside's going to be the hole. This is the hole out here. He had Vegas Robinson sitting there, but he also had room to make a move. He had blockers downfield if he would have broke it to the outside. Better chance to get yardage to hitting it up inside like he did. So Butler takes a breather, and Leotis Palmer, who's been battling that bad back tonight, is in it. Yeah, remember, Leotis can throw the football. Yeah, it's third and 11. Harris has not had success throwing. See if they give it to Palmer. He gets it and runs it. Palmer with the burst of speed. He gets it down close to the five yard line. Picked up eight. They need him 12. That was close. Adam Cole out there delivering a the lead block on Ronyell Whitaker, but at the pursuit of that Virginia Tech defense, he's going to force a field goal opportunity. See Adam Cole coming out here getting a nice block on Ronyell Whitaker, but here comes that pursuit of that Virginia Tech defense. Jimmy Williams saving the touchdown from his free safety spot because he's unblocked. Joey Ashcroft to the 45 yarder back in the first quarter. This is a 21 yarder. Left footer from the left hash. And Ashcroft two for two on the night. So Air Force. With the drive covered of over 40 yards, they get the field goal and now trail by four. Is it safe? Yeah, but hurry. This better be quick. Come on, come on, come on. Whoa, there's no way we can beat Dollars Raids. Hey, how are ya? The meeting's starting, let's go. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm coming. Yes. Dollar.com? Yeah, from now on, I can't afford us. When it's your money you're spending, log on for our lowest rates at dollar.com. Now more than ever, you have an obligation to contribute as much as you can to our society and grow into the person you always dreamed of. And this great country of ours gives out billions every year for you to do just that. I'm Matthew Lesko, and I want to show you why this great country of ours has money for you to start a business, grow a business, or train for a better job. Call this number, but even if you don't call, go out and find these programs yourself, because by helping yourself, you help America. It's power illustrated. It's pressure illustrated. It's passion illustrated. And where is it illustrated? Not here. Bob, they won because they... Not here. Not here. It's only in Sports Illustrated. You can't get this insight anywhere but an SI. And now get 12 free trial issues of SI. That's right, 12 free trial issues. Plus, continue to get SI at over 50% off the cover price. Call now and also get this one-of-a-kind fleece pullover absolutely free. But don't look for this free offer here, or here, or here. No one will call. It's only if you call. Use your credit card to reserve 12 free trial issues of SI. If if SI isn't for you, cancel and keep the 12 issues free. But you'll want to continue to get SI at over 50% savings and the free fleece pullover. You can't get this offer anywhere else. It's nowhere but here. Only in Sports Illustrated. Call now. We are back in San Francisco for the inaugural Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl. Joy Ashcroft with a field goal is Air Force defense stopping Virginia Tech and the offense getting the field goal out of that good field position. Here is the Saturn airship, this beautiful scenics tonight from above Pac Bell Park, brought to you by the Saturn airship. Saturn, of course, has the, the view, a very appropriately named SUV. And I certainly hope that you've enjoyed unique looks from the Bay Area, one of the most beautiful parts of this great nation in which we live. Right now, Air Force Go kicking Go away, and Turn on one defense. Virginia Tech has seen its lead whittled down to four points. Short kick taken at the 15. One of the up men. Virginia Tech will get pretty good field position. It's Justin Hamilton. We've seen him get a couple of short kicks in return tonight. That's a 20-yard return for Justin. Don't be surprised if that's not designed. You want to keep the ball out of the hands of number 22. Lee Suggs also returns kicks. Pretty good strategy to keep it out of the hands of that guy, the, the senior. This year, 
kickoffs average 28 and a half yards per kickoff return. So they had them going to the to the up dots. Randall to the air. And now uses his feet. Good coverage by the secondary, but Randall showing some of that skill. Picks up about eight. They tried to hit Keith Willis on what they call a seven cut, which is about a 12 yard up the field and a flag route out toward the sidelines. Air Force played good discipline, took him away, took Eastlick away on the flat route, the fullback in the flat, forcing Randall to pull it down. Good decision by Randall to tuck it and go. Has that ability. That's Randall just seven carries for 11 yards tonight. He had two 100 yard games rushing this year, including 132 against Miami. So that was the real rusher. Picks up the first down. Schlegel comes up with his eighth tackle. Schlegel, just a sophomore, very talented. Of course, reminds me a lot, and a lot of other people, too. Chris Gizzy, one of the fine linebackers in the history of Air Force, he was a tough guy, and yep. they, they talk quite often, uh, Schlegel and Gizzy. Yeah, the, you know, Air Force has a fine tradition of linebackers. He's one of them. You know, it's, it's normally you would say this at this point in the game, but there's 9.20 and ticking to go with Virginia Tech running the ball. You know that Air Force is a running team, so the clock does become a factor. Randall rolling to his right and completing it. That's his favorite target, Wilford, who catches the football. Picking up 13 yards for the first down for Tech. Five catches now for Wilford this evening. And that was a nice job of Wilford coming back for the football. You see Randall he rolls out, he bought time on his feet. Wilford came back for the football, make it a shorter throw. You see Wilford spread up the field. You see him playing off, a lot of cushion. Now he's going to come back and come get the ball and does a good job not catching the ball with the body but using his hands. Uh, Brian Randall has now completed six straight passes, so he's sort of having the anti-chance Harridge game. Harridge is just on his last 11 after completing his first. Nothing doing, bottled up nicely. Eastlick meets jo John Rudzinski at the line of scrimmage. And tonight in this game, Wilford has set a new Virginia Tech record. He had 46 catches coming in. That tied Mike Burnham, who had 46 catches in 71, and now he's passed him. See Anthony Schlegel right there. See Grove gets his hand under there, gets a cheap shot in because he took his face mask, drove his fist right up through his chin, knocked Anthony Schlegel's helmet off. Now we'll see if Anthony Schlegel comes from payback. You got to keep your composure. Grove came in there and gave him a nice uppercut right to the chops. Right. Grove has been nicknamed uh, there's the out and up. For his nastiness on the field, Wilford slipped a little bit and then could not catch up to the Randall pass. That was set up. That was been set up since the third quarter. They finally go to the out and up, but I give Air Force credit. Overstreet was beat, but he had help deep from his free safety coming over the top. The timing wasn't right. When Wilford slipped, that screwed up the timing of the out and up. He threw the little pump fake in there. Good call, good try by Virginia Tech. Quarterback comparison, Chris, no comparison. At least passing wise. Yeah, passing wise. A little chance is hanging in there. He's running the football. I'll tell you, he runs with power for, for a smaller guy, not a little guy, just a smaller guy. It's 56 yards on 15 carries, but miserable through the air. Four receivers in, three to the left of Randall on third and ten. Gets Harlem out to the left and he has stopped well short of the first down, picked up six. Schlegel again with the tackle, give him nine tackles. He also has a sack and a forced fumble on the evening. Yeah, I give credit to Larry Duncan. What he, Larry Duncan did was force that ball to go inside to Schlegel, who showed great speed and pursuit from his linebacker position. But that play wouldn't have happened. Farmer would have had a chance to get the first down, but Larry Duncan did a good job of forcing the ball inside, keeping his contained. And they're going to go for it. And nobody punts on either of these no. teams. It's fourth down, this you is, go. This is not a punting kind of day. Tech 0 for 1 on fourth downs tonight. This is fourth and four. They're going out of the gun. Four receivers. Wilford is alone. Right there, Whitman. That's who left. Let's see. Randall looks towards Whitman and then looks, uh, looks off as he looked toward Wilford and then completed it to Justin Hamilton for the first down. He looked off of Wilford, and he goes over to his trip side. They ran option route over there. Randall, again, not panicking. Nice job right here, boys. Good job on that front four. Not panicking, keeping his feet moving in that pocket, sets his feet, 
delivers a strike. And Hamilton. That's right, Hamilton, the four catches coming into tonight. That is his first this evening, and he caught it in front of Wes Crawley again playing after missing two games with a broken clavicle, one of the more painful injuries one could suffer. Here's Suggs spinning his way to pick up about four more yards on the ground. Well, we've seen a lot of tailbacks this year, and Lee Suggs is certainly up there with the best of them, but all the good tailbacks that we watch this year, the one thing they do is they're always going forward. When they get hit, they're spin, they always dive forward to get an extra yard. Good inside running, slashers. Suggs, 14 carries, 50, make it 15 carries, 58 yards, and those two touchdowns, this drive now going on its ninth play. And Suggs again, 16th carry, gets it up to the 20. He'll be a couple of yards short of the first down. That was 6.50 to go. You normally wouldn't say this, but what you're going to say, the clock is running. Let's take a look at Suggs Knight. That's the fumble that was ruled a fumble. It really wasn't. He was down, and Air Force converted it into a field goal. And this was called incomplete. You know, Crawley and uh, Wilford kind of had a, both had a yeah. hand on it. Well, the tie goes to the offense, and Wilford was inbounds when he came down. Should have been a touchdown. But it was called incomplete. Tech with the third and three. This is Suggs trying to get around the left side, and he breaks a tackle and lunges forward for the first down. Terrific effort by the senior from Rono. Buker had a shot. And what happens, instead of bringing his feet, you see he does a great job of working off people. Instead of bringing his feet, he drops to his knees. When you go to a tackle, you run through the guy. You don't run to him, you run through him. If you run to him, you don't bring your feet, you go to your knees. A guy like Lee Suggs will put you on his highlight film. And he did that. He's eating them up now. 66 yards, averaging just under four yards a carry this evening. And more importantly right now, Tech is in scoring position. Suggs picking his way for a few more as he gets it down close to the 11-yard line. That's five more before Hightower gets it. And Air Force with his triple option attack struggling mightily through the air. Touchdown here might just salt this game away. Fisher to Berry. Thinking about taking the timeout. Does he or doesn't he? He wants it. No, no, he wants it. He wants it. But yeah. I don't think his guys see him. Now they do. And Air Force will indeed take the timeout. Very crucial time, isn't it, Chris, for this Air Force defense? So they will talk it over. We will come back with Virginia Tech getting close to scoring again. to do with these? The answer? Try delicious diamond nuts on all your favorite foods, like walnuts and stuffing, or on oatmeal. It's a great way to add texture and taste to just about anything. Wholesome, delicious diamond nuts. They top everything. Try diamond glazed nuts, now available in snack sizes. Still doing those bills, hon? <laughs> just resting with a credit card balance. <laughs> You've been feeding on those high interest rates. <laughs> I just switched our balance over to a Capital One No Hassle card. Huh? We're going to save 500 bucks a year. 500 bucks? Switch your high interest balance to the Capital One No Hassle card for the nation's lowest long-term fixed rates. You could save up to $500 a year. What's in your wallet? Intelligence is not limited to humans. Make a collect call, Mr. Frisky. Witness him dialing down the center of 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-T-T. Even he knows it's free for you and cheap for them. Save on every call. Dial 1 800 Call ATT for collect calls. Spin, spin, spin the globe. It's your turn to spin the globe. Spin it, spin it, spin it. Yeah. All around the world, Siemens is helping people work together, even when they're not together. From next generation internet to mobile business solutions, we're giving people the freedom to communicate better. Spin, spin, spin the globe. It's your turn to spin the globe. 
He thought fighting I gotta take karate. was the only way to win. But what he really needed was a friend. You're the best friend I ever had. Real Classics, the movie and an inside look at the Karate Kid. 9 Eastern Sunday on ESPN Classic. Air Force defense needs a big stop here in San Francisco. Meanwhile, tomorrow, Capital One Bowl Week concludes. Can you believe it? At 9.30 Eastern in the morning. That's 6.30 here in San Francisco. Chris Lee and Kirk break down all the day's bowl games on a special edition of College Game Day presented by Discover Card. You'll see John Navarre in Michigan take on Rex Grossman in Florida. The Outback Bowl from Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And that game is uh, coming up about eight hours and ten minutes from now. Chris, how cool is that? So after the Air Force timeout, second and six, Suggs, who else? And he doesn't go anywhere. A little bit of a semi-slip, and he ran into Joel Bilo. Joel Bilo did a nice job keeping contained, avoiding the blocker, not giving one for one, and tackling a guy tough to tackle one-on-one. -on -one. Lee Suggs. Bilo, a senior from Pulaski, Wisconsin, playing his last game for the Air Force Academy, and now a huge third and six from the 11-yard line. Make it third and five now. Tech three for ten on third downs tonight. Got a possible jump ball situation. Again, with Wilford down here. Randall heads over the sideline. No timeout has been taken as the uh, play clock goes down inside ten seconds. I think Tech is... Let the clock go down a little bit, and Randall standing next to the referee is going to call a timeout with two seconds left on the play clock. So smart right there. You let the play clock, well, the game clock, more importantly, wind down to 426. Big third down coming up. What's up, Sean? Not much. What's up with you? Uh, I'm nothing. What are you doing here? Nothing. How about you? Nothing. Cool. Sean White, turning up the heat on Kevin Jones. Winter X Games 7 in Aspen starts January 30th on ESPN2. Attention, this is a consumer alert. Buy a new Chevy from Web Chevrolet and get 0% financing for 60 months, zero money down, and zero payments for 90 days. And Web Chevrolet will beat any deal on a new Chevy by $500. Credit a problem? Not at Web Chevy. Our credit experts will get you approved. Got a job? We will put you in a car. Yes, you can drive the car of your dreams because everyone drives home from Web Chevrolet. The whole town's talking about the web, boys. See your web family dinner today. Chevrolet will be there. Mom, we've got new video of your grandbaby. Can I email it to you? Email it to you. Ah! Disconnecting! Mom, I'll have to pass, dear. Seen one baby, you seen them all, right? Get lightning fast speeds with AT&T Broadband Internet. No dial-up, no hassles, problem solved. View of a beautiful night here in San Francisco. Tech trying to make it more beautiful for themselves. They have a big third down coming up here, Chris. They score a touchdown, pretty much Air Force. Their night could be over. Well, it is. If they, if they hold them a the field goal, it's a one-possession ball game. Now, if they're able to punch it in here, it becomes a two-possession ball game. It's awful tough to score two possessions on that wishbone with 4.26 left to go. Or the triple option, excuse me, not the wishbone. A little flashback there. <laughs> Too much ESPN Classic for you, maybe. This is a big, big play. Randall after the timeout goes down. Randall rolled out, and Adrian Wright was right there. And they come from the blitz off the back side. Nobody picked up Adrian Wright. Here comes Adrian Wright off the back side. He's going to go ahead and not honor the fake, get up field, get contained, does a great job of closing and making a play. Big play for Air Force. So Fisher DeBerry's guys coming up with a big stop, and they take a timeout. Rex Grossman and the Gators collide with John Navarre and the Wolverines. Touchdown. Capital One Bowl Week continues with the Outback Bowl. 11 a.m. New Year's Day on ESPN. Discover the amazing training secrets of America's finest baseball school with Dynamic Practice Organization, a revolutionary new instructional videotape. Dynamic Practice Organization features professional scout and instructor Tom Imanski with his famous building block approach to athletic training. This exciting instructional videotape features the same drills, techniques, and methods.
six that have produced baseball world's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU national championship teams. Dynamic practice organization makes any coach look like a genius and organizes offensive and defensive practices that players of all ages and ability levels can't wait to attend and immensely improves team communication skills and even conditioning. This is the instructional video that's a winner. To order your copy for only $29.95, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 1-800-652-0101. This dynamic practice organization teaching video makes a great gift, too. Call now, 1-800-652-0101. College basketball on ESPN. Rashad McCants in North Carolina take it strong to the hole against Miami. Then, Michigan State looks to shut down Oklahoma and Hollis Price. It's a full Saturday of college hoops on ESPN and ESPN2. <laughs> the Gospel, according to ESPN. A great holiday gift. Buy it now. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl. Brought to you by Diamond of California. Be sure to try Diamond's new line of Pedal Cook Glaze Walnuts, the perfect game time snack. And by Capital One, who asks, what's in your wallet? McCovey Cove, uh, the China Basin surrounding Pacific Bell Park, and right now, Carter Worley in to attempt a 37-yard field goal. He's one for two tonight, and he had trouble on it, keeping his feet on a kickoff earlier. Slick field. Let's see how he does. Doesn't slip at all, and he punches it through. So Worley, good from 37, and that extends Virginia Tech's lead to six. Not really too hurtful for Air Force because they needed to score a touchdown anyway. Let's go down to Rob Stone. Well, Pam, not to add fuel to the kicking fire, but, you know, Carter Worley might have had a little good mojo on his side. You see, he started a new tradition this year for the kickers. They have a good luck charm right here. This guy, he, he, he brings them out every game they've actually had two stolen from them in the locker room his name is hoodwinks and uh, you know how important hoodwinks is chris how, how important rob he is so important that when a virginia tech player left the team hoodwinks took his locker <laughs> hoodwinks has his own locker good job hoodwinks uh, hoodwink. you, got, you got good mascots and yeah, bad mascots yeah, this good is a good one. troll that's a little that's starting to scare me a little yeah bit, it rob. is too <laughs> He's got an axe and everything. Oh, man, who oh, is this? Those kickers. That's worse than a Chucky doll. <laughs> well, it's worked for Carter Worley as he knocked home that 37-yard field goal. So the lead goes from 4 to 7 with 4-11 left to go. Air Force got to get the ball back and have to score a touchdown to keep this, keep this season hopes in this game alive. An interesting decision by Fisher to Barry to take a timeout to so-called ice the kicker. You, you don't have a timeout. That's right. You got one left. You had two. You only have one. Worley with the kickoff. Ryan Blue from the one. And he gets popped near the 17. New Year's Day, not just for football, but for basketball. You can spend it with ESPN and the NBA at 7 Eastern tomorrow night for Pacific. The Raptors visit the Knicks. NBA Wednesdays on ESPN, becoming a new tradition. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Allen Houston leading the Knicks, popping in 22 points a game. Catch up from Madison Square Garden tomorrow night on ESPN. It's a great, great job by Virginia Tech kickoff coverage team. Covered inside the 20. This team doesn't pick up big chunks offensively in bunches. And now it's all up to Chance Harridge. And he is tackled. A very good ankle tackle by Vegas Robinson, his sixth tackle of the night. Kept Harridge from getting some space. And Vegas did a good job of defending the pass, recognizing the run when Chance tucked it, defeated the blocker, and got him down any way he could. Robinson missed three games with a sprained ankle towards the middle of the season, including Pittsburgh and Syracuse, two games that Virginia Tech lost, but he's played very well tonight. He, and he was among those mentioned as being a key by his defensive coordinator, Bud Foster, and he's come up big. Eric still can't complete a pass as it is ruled incomplete. 
And Ronyel Whitaker is jumping around. He thought he had an interception. A flag is down in the Air Force backfield. Yeah, they got a little personal foul. I believe late, on Colas. Yeah, late hit on Harridge back there, it looks like. Again, now, Air Force dodging a the bullet there. Defense, 15 yards, previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, I tell you what, Whitaker thought he had an interception, and that would have salted the game away, but instead you get a 15-yard penalty. It was ruled incomplete. See, Strecker's tight end's open. Chance delivers a good ball. There you go. Bad footing. Slip and fall down. And you'll see right here the penalty. I believe it's on Colas. Yeah, he's got to pull up. It's, it's a drill shot on him. Let that go. It's toward the end of the ball game. You don't want to afford any penalties. You don't want to give away free yards. It was indeed definitely a one hopper to Whitaker. Harris again off that back foot. Boy, and he's lucky that one wasn't intercepted. The closest guy to it was Billy Hargee from Tech. Yeah, see, I'm having a little trouble figuring out where Chance was trying to put that ball. And if you're going to throw it away, then throw it away. I mean, put it over there in uh, Barry's place, over in McCovey's Cove. <laughs> Don't put it by, don't put it in no. play. <laughs> Nowhere near, man. He is now one for 13, Chris, with two interceptions. Again, he completed the first pass he threw, and since then, 12 of them, 10 have been incomplete, and two have been picked off. We got Anthony Butler back here in the eye back position. I like the foul roll off this. They give it to Butler. And he is bottled up after picking up about I mean, two yards. RD coming up with his fifth stop. Clock continues to roll now inside three, inside three minutes. Now you got one timeout left. There's got to be a little bit more sense of urgency by Air Force, in my opinion. You got to get up to the line of scrimmage, call the play. Just one timeout left for the Falcons. On third and eight, huge, huge play. Harridge keeping it, and he lunges and falls down. Marked just near the first down marker. It appears he has it. He limps because he landed hard on that left knee. The one thing about Chance Harridge, he's not been successful throwing the football move, but you'll see as a guy playing with guts. Right hand again, they have four lead blockers because they pull a guard. And Chance trying to get anything he can, lunges for the first down. 17 carries now, 67 yards for the quarterback. He averages. <laughs> About 90 yards a game on the ground. Steve Massey, the big fullback, picks up three. Yeah, he's a big, thick nick, Steve Massey, and he, he'd be well served to keep that ball running inside. He's not going to break anything in the corner, but actually he made a pretty good cut in vision and was able to get positive yards. Massey listed at 5'11", 230. So we hit the two-minute mark. Now second and seven for the Falcons at midfield. In motion, but they give it right up the middle to Massey again. Picks up three. The clock, the definite enemy of the Falcons. It is again when you can't throw the ball effectively. That's Air Force's last time out, Chris. Wow. They have to call it with a minute 47 left to go, and another huge third down coming up. I understand why they take the timeout now. It's a third down. It's important down that they probably want to call two plays. They're talking about two plays. You don't get the first down. What's your next play? Get in the huddle, get out, or like run it from the line of scrimmage. The time Lamar Cobb did a great job. Now see, he, Lamar played that dive. He came in from his defensive end position, took the dive play right away, unblocked. Big East off to a terrific start before West Virginia ran into that buzzsaw. Boy, Virginia, good this year. They're going to be something else next year. They got just about everybody back, and Al Groh excited about these uh, freshmen coming in. And the last Big East team to play will be the University of Miami in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl ABC Sports Friday night against some team from Columbus. Yeah, that's, <laughs> and, and a little distraction out of Yeah, Maurice Claret. Yeah. Lost a friend. I, you know, you wish, almost wish that somehow they could just, okay, your friend passed away, get to the funeral here, get home, come back. Not going through all the hoops and bells and whistles and what have you. But instead, some unhappiness on Claret's part. Now, third and four, Harridge completes a huge pass. His first completion since the first quarter is for a first down. That's Adam Strecker, his tight end. Uh, Adam Strecker did. 
split the seam. Nobody took the tight end down the seam route. Everybody's jumping up there. When you run the ball inside, you got to take the tight end down the seam. Chance Harris went right to him. Adams secured the football. Knew he was going to get hit, but I liked his concentration. Kept his eye on the ball. Secured the catch and took the shot. That's 19 yards for Strucker, his leading receiver, only his 15th catch on the season. Flags down as Butler is spun down by Willie Pyle. Stops the clock with a buck 28 to go. Alec Messerall is going to get called. Somebody in the back. On the crackback block. That's a legal block. You just got to hit him in front. And this is a Pac-10 crew. Gordon Reese is our referee. Back offense. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Still first down. You got it, Chris. What you want to do is throw your hands up in the air. You want to go belly bump. Them. Don't take a look at it. We'll see the crackback. Here's the option. It's a good read. Right there's the, right there's the crackback on Willie Powell. Now what you want to do in order not to get called but still make an effective block is you throw your hands up above your head and you belly bump him. You can knock him out of the way, knock him off the pursuit course, yet still get effective block without getting called for a penalty. It's not cheating. It's finding a way to get it done. And he didn't go with the belly. It got him nope. hard for the crackback. Clock rolling now. First and 20. Barrett dropping back. There's the post. He's There's the post. post. He's looking for Park, and it's knocked away. What a play by Ron Young Whitaker. A great play by Ron Young Whitaker, but that's on Chance Harris. He had Park deep in the post. He had the safety biting like we talked about all night. The only problem is, instead of putting that ball in a little bit more of a line, he threw a floater. You can't throw a floater, and that's what Brian L. Whitaker can do is go get some great speed, catch up speed, and come with his left hand, avoiding the interference with his right hand and getting at the highest point. It was open. He was open. See that? He was open early. Chance needs to put some a little bit of line on that football. He had him open on the post. You're right, it was a major league pop up. Second and 20. That's a on the line drive. Good catch. Falling out of bounds by Tom Heyer, the halfback. And stops the clock with a minute one left to go. Now, if you're Air Force, you're not used to picking up big chunks, so you don't need the panic here and try to get all the yardage on this third down play. You don't need to run a 17-yard pass play. You want to get yourself in a manageable fourth down. And they've been two out of three on fourth down conversions tonight, so they're used to going for it on fourth down. And they've been successful all year going for it on fourth down. Actually, Chris, three for four tonight Thank on you. fourth down. So it's now 19 of 26 on the season. Six for 15 on third downs this evening. Third and 14, they try to get a chunk of it back with Butler. And Butler gets it down to the 29. It's going to be about 10 yards short of the first down. Yeah, Virginia Tech was burned on that draw on big third downs earlier in the ball game about three times. That time, Bakel played linebacker very well, read the high hats of the guards. They set short, come out for a draw, he just beats the block and makes a play. So this is your ball game, fourth and 11. The clock's ticking. The clock's ticking. We've got 30 seconds of counting. From the 30. Lotus Palmer in motion. Palmer, good block. Harridge, chance to throw, and he completes it. J.P. Waller gets it, stops the clock inside the 10. Well, you, you could say all you want about Chance Harris throwing the football. But when you need a play, he delivered a strike on the line. It was a well-thrown ball. It was a great route. He had the presence of his feet. He got both feet in bounds. Then he got out of bounds to stop the clock. He has 17 seconds to go now. You've got to have two plays called the huddle. First down from the 10, technically first and goal for the Falcons. Harris going up top again, over the middle, and he threw it just a little bit behind Nesserol. But it stops the clock with 13 seconds left. Right, Nesserol had some room there, but it was thrown behind him. You don't have time to run the football now. So obviously, Virginia Tech's going to be playing pass, and that's an advantage for their pass rushers. They're going to get in their track stance. They're going to be coming. Chance has got to deliver the ball quick. you got time for two or three plays. In 13 seconds, you've got time for two or three plays, depending on how quick you get rid of the football. No timeouts left for Air Force. 
play action. Harich has to go across the field, and it's incomplete. A dangerous pass to Leonis Palmer. Clock stops now with seven seconds to go. Yeah, Virginia Tech went man to man, and I'll tell you, Bikel did a good job from his middle linebacker spot playing Leonis Palmer. It was a nice play call. I like it, but when you play disciplined defense like Bikel there, you stay on your man. You don't follow the ball. You follow your man. You're in good position to make a play. So now third and goal from the 10. It was a long developing play because he rolled out. There was play action. This time, Harrod, if he's down, the game will end. And the ball is picked up by Brett Heiser, and that'll do it. But a flag is down on the field. There is no time left on the clock. No flag. Flag has been picked up, and that is our ball game. Chance Harris playing his heart out. He's a junior. He will be back next year, but Virginia Tech takes a 20 to 13. Chance's counterpart, Brian Randall, is our Capital One player of the game. You see his numbers, 177 passing yards, only misfired on five passes as he leads Virginia Tech to the 20 to 13 win at the 2002 Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl. Great effort by both teams, outstanding. Great football game, they played their hearts out. This is what college football is all about. Happy New Year, they wish you could. Yeah, Newman. I see that. It's been awesome. a great season. Thanks to Chris and Rob Stone, Bart Fox, our producer, Bob Frateroli, our director. A terrific season, and we ended in a terrific city, San Francisco. The final score from the 2002 Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl. Virginia Tech wins it 20 to 13. ESPN News is coming up. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Happy New Year from San Francisco. Some say he's still out wandering these hills, looking for his lost head. It's a true story. Fox is brought to you by Triple X, available now. Now on DVD by SBC, ordinary people, extraordinary job. By Wrangler, real comfortable jeans. And by Southwest Airlines, bringing people together with low fares.